It's time for Blazer Gridiron action here at Baysmore Hyder Stadium at historic Cleveland Field on the campus of Valdosta State University as VSU TV brings you the 25th anniversary of Blazer football. Today, the Blazers at 5-1 and one and 3-1 and one in Gulf South Conference play and ranked 14th in this week's AFCA Division II National Poll look to rebound from last week's defeat as they host the 5-2 and two Tigers of West Alabama in a crucial Gulf South Conference matchup. Along with the best color commentator in the business, Dustin Sweetelson, I am Neil Folger. Dustin, let's take a look at the latest GSC standings. Looking here at the Gulf South Conference standings, number three in the nation, North Alabama, sits on top of everyone at 5-0 and in GSC play and 6-0 and overall in the season. Valdosta State at number 14 in the nation, sits at 3-1 and one in Gulf South Conference play and 5-1 and one overall. And their opponents today, West Alabama, are 2-2 two and two in GSC play this year, 5-2 and two overall in the season. Should be a good game. We mentioned before that on October 12th, Valdosta State went on the road to Cleveland, Mississippi to clash with their conference rival, the Statesmen of Delta State, in an important Thursday night, regionally televised, Gulf South Conference battle. Let's check out the game highlights. As you can see, the Blazers are getting ready for, for, their, for the Delta State, and they would need it as Steven Davis went seven yards through four VSU defenders for the early 7-0 lead. But the Blazers would respond as Alan Tillman hits Cedric Jones on this 63-yard scoring pass, and the game is now tied 7-7. But DSU would respond with two scoring drives capped off by this 16-yard Ken Cox run on fourth and inches, and, VSU, and DSU is up 21-7. But Copeland hits Tharp here for the four-yard TD connection, and the Blazers are down by seven at halftime. In the second half, Willie Copeland finds Zach Parker in the end zone six yards away, and the game is tied up, but it wouldn't last long as Scott Eister goes deep and hits Eric Marshall in stride for this 79-yard TD bomb, and Delta State went back up 28-21. After both squads played defense, Eister again found a wide receiver, this time Jeremy Ricks behind the Blazers' secondary for a 15 touchdown for 15 yard touchdown play but the Blazers would respond to adversity down by 14 when Copeland hits Tyler Arndt in the end zone to get the lead to 35 28 but that would be as close as the Blazers got as Copeland here is intercepted by Miles Mason with less than three minutes to go in the game and that would be your final score as DSU wins 35 to 28. Let's check out today's starting lineups for the Vadasta State Blazers. First for the Hatch Attack offense. At X receiver, it is 5'10", 175 pound senior. Number 83, Reggie Vickers, taking the place of the injured Cedric Jones. At your wide receiver position will be the 210 pound senior. Number nine, Alan Tillman getting the start, start at wide receiver. Your Z receiver is 5'9", 165 pound junior. Number one, Jeffrey Felton. Your offensive line today at left tackle will be number 56, Gerald Davis. At left guard will be the 6'1", 250-pound freshman, Teddy Morris. Calling the singles for the offensive line will be junior number 50, Rooster Russell. At right guard will be 6'1", 274-pound freshman, Mike Williams. And the right tackle position will be held up by number 73, Abundio Corchado. At quarterback today will be the Fort Valley transfer, number 13, Willie Copeland. His running back for today's game will be number 22, Rashawn Robinson. Your fullback, when he's in the ball game, will be 5'11", 229-pound junior, the pain train, Scott Palmer. And the H receiver in today's game will be the senior captain, number four, Tyler Arndt. Looking at this Blazer Black Swarm defense, Starting at defensive end, out of Jessup, Georgia, number 47, Travis Harrison. At defensive tackle, the Masabi Range Community College transfer, Bo May. At nose tackle, Jamel Daniels, that 310-pounder out of Thomas County Central High. At defensive end, the senior from here in Valdosta, Kelvin Roberts. At linebacker, the money man, Lavaris Dollar. Also at linebacker, number 48, William Montfort, who will be crucial against this West Alabama ground attack today. Your other linebacker for today is Mike Cullen out of Atlanta, Georgia. At left cornerback and plunk punt block specialist, Sean Harris out of Blakely, Georgia. 
At Rover, the sophomore out of Powder Springs, Georgia, Everett Kitchens. At Free Safety, the speedster who will also return kicks and punts today, Sherard Reynolds. And at right cornerback, the former linebacker, Maurice Leggett, who's out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Taking a look now at the Blazer special teams. Doing the place kicking duties in today's game will be sophomore Zach Williams. Kicking the ball off will be number 16, Chad Gallahan. Punting duties will be performed by the sophomore, number 86, Stephen Wright. And like Dustin said, the ever dangerous Sherrard Reynolds will be returning kicks and punts. We'll be back here on VSU TV in just a minute. West Alabama and Valdosta State, GSC action next. It starts in your own neighborhood. When you care enough to give your time to help someone still learning the way and getting involved in the needs of your community. Once you've helped bring a smile to someone's face and help brighten their day, you'll be hooked for life. The Major League Baseball Players Trust and Volunteers of America are teaming up to make a real difference in the lives of the people in our communities. Join a winning team. See what you can do to help. We come from all walks of life. We come from diverse backgrounds. We are seeking opportunities. We are seeking to make a difference. Making a difference in our family's future, in our community's well-being, and in our country's freedom. We are America's future. We are members of the Air National Guard. About a year ago, Mark and I thought, air pollution, global warming. How can we make a difference? So Mark modified our car some sort of homemade energy source. The best part is the car emits only helium. <laughs> Genius. Genius. But the EPA says the energy we use in our home can cause twice the greenhouse gases of a car. So now I look for products that are in the Energy Star. Simple. The EPA invites you to go to energystar.gov to discover what you can do to reduce air pollution. Welcome back here on VSU TV as we are set to go here at Baysmore Hyder Stadium. West Alabama, Valdosta State, three and one Blazers, two and two Tigers. Doesn't get any better than this. Perfect afternoon in Valdosta, light breeze coming in. Back to receive for the Tigers will be their all conference performer, Chris Coach, and the ball is in the air. Coach takes it at his six yard line. Has some blockers in front, but that doesn't mean a thing as VSU wraps him up at the 16 yard line where the Bobby Wallace-led Tigers will take the field for the first time in today's ball game. Of course, Bobby Wallace, the man who won three consecutive national championships over at North Alabama, now leading this resurgent West Alabama program. Resurgent is an understatement. They are five and two overall. They are two and two in the league, and they boast a top 10 rushing attack in the nation, not just in conference, in nation. Wishbone formation now for West Alabama. James Ryder is the quarterback. Three backs behind him, first and 10, West Alabama. The handoff is gonna be to his fullback and he gets minimal yards on the play. Tackled first, I believe, by Josh Bass. This is a very, very capable rushing attack here for the Tigers as they have a bunch of players who average over 40 yards a game and on the ground. Consistency and the ability to give it up to more than one people is crucial to winning games, especially in Gulf South Conference play. Second and 10 from West Alabama's own 17 yard line. Ryder's gonna keep it. He's got blockers, he's got Chris Couch out in front of, of, uh, of himself and he makes a good pickup First down yards all the way to the 39 yard line and that is what's dangerous about this West Alabama team. They run a really good option. Ryder here runs the option, keeps it himself and he is one of those three guys that I mentioned before averaging over 40 yards per game on the ground. Picked up a very big block on the play by his number one wide right receiver, Chris Coach. First down and 10 for West Alabama at their own 37 yard line. Ryder's gonna hand it off to his fullback, Jaron Wright, another one of those capable UWA backs, and he picks up about two, three yards 
on the play. Wright actually leads this rushing attack, averaging 82.5 yards per game. As we see here in the replay, he gets stuffed by Travis Harrison right at the line for a gain of one. West Alabama, not a very good passing team, but when it does come time to pass, look out for Chris Coach, leading their team with 35 catches, about 660 yards, and eight touchdowns. Handoff is gonna be to number five, Tyrone Tomlin, and he breaks through the VSU coverage, gets about seven, eight yards on the play down to their 46 yard line. Third down and short for the Tigers. Here in the replay, you see the handoff there. He gets right up the middle, gains a few yards on the play after being swarmed by that Black Swarm defense. Third down, two to go for West Alabama at their own 46 yard line. Ryder behind center. Has a running back lined off center to his right. He's going to run. He's got some blockers. And Ryder's going to be very close to first to the first down before he is shoved back by the entire Black Swarm defense. It's going to be a close measurement to see if the Tigers picked up that first down. I'm pretty sure the Black Swarm defense prevented it, and we're going to see fourth down here. But watch Ryder here. He fakes the handoff, rolls out to his right, gets some huge blocks from his running backs, and he's eventually taken down by the free safety Sherrod Reynolds with the help from Mike Cohen. It is fourth down and about inches to go. They are on offensive formation, so we're gonna have a very early fourth down try here by West Alabama. Two receivers, and it's, it's gonna be a pooch kick instead. Good call by Bobby Wallace, that that's gonna take a West Alabama bounce go inside the 10 yard line and eventually be downed at the six where the hatch attack will take over in its first possession of today's game. Great coaching there by Bobby Wallace. We knew he was a great coach. Keep the ball away from Sherrard Reynolds who has been absolutely devastating everyone on special teams with his returns. Now it's time to talk about the Valdosta State offense coming off a 28 point performance in their loss last week at Delta State going up against another good caliber defense in West Alabama. Blazers are gonna stack it up. Four wide receivers to the near side, one to the far side for Copeland. He's got Tyler Orange, look out. Wide receiver screen, and that's getting minimal yardage on the play, good for about one to two yards. No Cedric Jones so far, and that's gonna be huge for the Blazers. He has had a, over 100 yards receiving every single week here. He go, Copeland goes to his senior wide receiver, Tyler Arndt, and Arndt might need to have a huge day and pick up the slack with no Cedric Jones. Handoff is gonna be faked to Rashawn Robinson. Instead, they find Derek Tharp, who takes it good enough for a Blazer first down up to the 17 yard line. Dustin, you mentioned about Cedric Jones. He is questionable on the game, as we see here the replay. Copeland faked the handoff to Robinson and actually found Reggie Vickers, who's Cedric Jones' replacement in the starting lineup today, to pick up the first down. Blazers coming out very fast on offense, trying to catch this West Alabama defense off guard. And Copeland has a man. He finds number one, Jeffrey Felton, good for about six, seven yards on the play. He found Jeffrey Felton, however, downfield. Uh, I believe it was number 83. Reggie Vickers had about a half a step on his man. Second down, six to go. Handoff is to Rashawn Robinson. Breaks a tackle up to the 33 yard line. And all of a sudden we're seeing a Blazer offense that is quick to the snap, quick to the huddle, and they're getting plays on. Good handoff to Robinson who burst through the gates there and spun off a block and was able to pick up a few more yards on the play. Snap is to Copeland. He has a man, it's Alan Tillman. Nice catch, good blocking, good moves by Tillman before he takes a lick by number 28, Terrence Campbell, the defensive back out of Clanton, Alabama. Tillman's really impressed me. The former quarterback who hadn't played wide receiver till this year, who transferred here from Auburn, really looks good at the wide receiver position. Two receivers, <laughs> snap to Copeland. They're going even faster than I am as the pass is complete 
to Reggie Vickers, good enough for about a four or five yard gain on the play. Coach Hatcher is really moving the ball fast and effective so far, trying to catch this West Alabama off defense sleeping a little bit. Two receivers to the near side, one to the far side, two running backs in the backfield. Copeland takes a snap, gonna be a fake hand, fake throw. And the hands off to Rashawn Robinson, who instead is met in the backfield by Tim Kelly, the defensive end out of Gordo, Alabama. Good play by Tim Kelly there, who didn't buy the play fake, which was a good play fake by Copeland, and was able to take down Rashawn Robinson, the running back, before getting any yards on the play. There you see coach Chris Hatcher trying to catch the West Alabama defense sleeping a little bit that series, but ultimately it resulted in a punt as Stephen Wright connects not one of his best punts taken by Chris Coach at the 30-yard line, and he makes the initial Blazers miss before being tackled at the 42-yard line. The Tigers do now have very good field position on their the own 44-yard line, and let's see if that option attack comes back again and they can move the ball downfield for a score. Here we see the punt that went by Stephen Wright, not one of his better ones of the year. We've seen Stephen Wright really be able to keep the opposing team deep in their own territory, and that just wasn't one of his better punts. I formation for the Tigers. Handoff is going to be to Jaron Wright. Picks up about three yards on the carry. West Alabama, five and two on the year. Two and two in conference. They've lost to both Harding and Henderson State, as we see here on the replay. A good pickup there by the Tiger ground attack again. Second down, seven to go at the Tigers' 45-yard line. James Ryder behind snap, behind center. Going to be a fake off, and he's going to keep it before he is tackled by number 48, William Monford, the junior linebacker out of Cordell. It's about a six, five yard pickup on the play, which will bring up third and three. Good play call by Bobby Wallace here as Ryder fakes the handoff and calls on his own number to pick up a few yards on the play, bringing up third down and three to go. Eight minutes, 20 seconds to go here in the first quarter of play. We're still scoreless, 0-0, Valdosta State, West Alabama. Three running backs and one receiver formation. And Ryder is going to keep it. He's going to try and keep it, but instead, he's not going to get far as the defense led by Everett Kitchens and Sherrard Reynolds sniffs that draw play out quickly. Also helping out in the play was Kelvin Roberts, and the Black Swarm defense was able to pick up on this option and break through the offensive line on both sides of the play, and Sherrard Reynolds and Everett Kitchens in team effort bring down Ryder. Sherrard Reynolds back to receive the punt. It's a fake. It is going to be a fake, and they do pick up the first down. Aggressive play calling by Bobby Wallace is paid off, and the Tigers have a first down and 10 inside Blazer territory at the, at the Blazers' 42-yard line. Some more great play calling from the great Bobby Wallace, and he picks up the first down now as they move across deeper into Blazer territory. Bobby Wallace and Chris Hatcher is a coaching matchup that is just aching of talent, chess matching going on the entire time. First and 10 for West Alabama. Ryder takes a snap. He's going to keep it. He's looking deep. He has his man. It's Chris Couch. And that's going to be almost intercepted by Maurice Leggett at the Ryder's two yard two line. Points. The key to Leggett's coverage on that play was he got inside the receiver and was able to get in front of the pass. Good coverage downfield by Leggett, who as we've seen lately has maybe gotten beat by a few receivers over the past few weeks. Getting inside the receivers is something that the Blazers secondary lacked last week at Delta State. Good to see Coach Anders trying to solve that problem early in this game. Second down and 10 to go for West Alabama. Ryder keeps it again, trying to go deep. Has a man, number 20, who is met immediately by Lavaris Dollar, the money man, and 20 looks like he took a hit. That is Edward Pierce, the wide receiver out of Mississippi, and he's down on the field. Now he's getting up. 
That was just a vicious hit by Lavar's Dollar, the money man as we know him, who absolutely put a hurting on him there. It looks like 20 is going to have to step out for a while and try and get his brain picked up from the field. That was a message. If you're going to come somewhere near the middle of the field in front of defenders and catch the ball, you're going to pay a price. Third down, seven to go for the Tigers at the Blazer 39-yard line. Dewan White to the near side, Couch to the far side. Ryder looks deep, has its man. It's Chris Couch, Chris Coach, excuse me. And that will be a quarterback to receiver duo we're going to see a lot of in today's ball game. Ryder drops back here, fakes the pitch, and finds his number one receiver, Coach, on what looked to be a, a curl route. Coach on the year has caught 36 passes. His next closest receiver to him has caught six. That is how much James Ryder and Chris Coach rely on each other. First and 10, West Alabama, and West Alabama is going to take a quick time out. We'll be back here on VSU TV with the rest of the first quarter after this. Saving for retirement might be easy for some folks, but for others, it might take a little more work. And for those who haven't started, there are still things you can do to catch up. Oh, that is good news. Like getting out from underneath past debt. And don't get wrapped up with high interest credit cards. Let's get you some eyes. Be diversified with your investments. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Your financial goals are not out of reach. The choice is clear. For a happy ending, choose to save. Welcome back here on VSU TV. First quarter action here at Baysmore Hyder Stadium. West Alabama taking their second possession downfield. Now finds themselves with the first and 10 at Valdosta State's 29 yard line. It's gonna be a fake handoff to number 35, Jonathan Wright, and he's got room, and he's got the end zone. Touchdown, Tigers, and West Alabama draws first blood in today's contest. This is just an impressive running attack for these West Alabama Tigers. They look very good early on in the game. Here on the replay, the play fake, and he hands it off there to Jaron Wright, who takes it all the way to the house, beating defenders, putting six points on the board early on, and the Blazers aren't used to being down 6-0 at home. Credit Dewan White Wright, the wide receiver, and Randall Hunt, the offensive lineman, for crucial blocks on that play as a point after attempt is good. And with six minutes and three seconds to go in the first quarter, it is the Tigers of West Alabama clawing up early, seven nothing over the Blazers of Valdosta State. Well, we were mentioning early that this West Alabama team is probably one of the most balanced teams offensively and defensively that VSU has faced here at home all year long. And they seem to be on a roll on offense. And every player is on the same page, knowing exactly where they're going to go, whether they're running the ball or they're passing it to coach. They seem to be very successful early on. This Blazer offense is going to need to counter here with a score because they're not used to losing at home. They're not used to being down a full touchdown at home. It hasn't happened very often this year. They're not used to losing, period, because in Hatcher's time, they've had, I believe, 11 losses in seven years. Maurice Leggett and Sherrard Reynolds are back to receive the kick from Mitch Warfield, the sophomore kicker out of Bay Minette, Alabama. West Alabama completed one pass on that drive. The rest was used by their running attack. West Alabama is set to kick it off and the ball is in the air. It's gonna come down to Maurice at the Blazer five yard line. He's got a little bit of an alley, makes some initial Tigers miss before he is forced out of bounds at the 40 yard line. Very, very good return by Leggett. And that gives the hatch attack very solid field position. Impressive return there from Leggett. We haven't seen much of him returning kicks this year as Sherrard Reynolds has gotten most of that duty, but Leggett with a very impressive uh, run there, getting Willie Copeland some decent field position to work with, which is key for Copeland's offense. He seems to work great 
as all quarterbacks do when he gets decent field position. Quarterback change now in for, oh no, excuse me, I thought I saw Clay Calva there for a second, but he's in the backfield. It is Willie Copeland back to receive the snap. Looking deep, being pressured, and down it goes. The ball is loose, and it looks like that it will be second down, that Willie did get the ball back, but what pressure put on by 58, Jacoby Avery, the DE out of Granada, Mississippi, came by, hit Willie Copeland's blind side, and Willie was just dead. I wonder if Willie even knows where he is right now. That was a huge hit. He didn't see it coming on his backside. Let's see if he can recover here and get a few yards at second and 19. Second down 19, pass is gonna be complete to Vickers, and he has met nowhere. Actually loses one more yard on the play. Back to the 29 yard line, and the Tigers have come out and just played outstanding football in the first quarter. Here we see the fake handoff to number seven, Dion Williams, and Copeland hits Reggie Vickers, who's trying to replace Cedric Jones this week, but he's an irreplaceable figure in this offense, and this offense is really struggling without him. Third down, 21 to go at the Blazer 29 yard line. Two receivers to the near side, one to the far side. Here comes the pressure. Willie looking deep, has to run, being pressured. He's gonna throw and complete it to Scott Palmer, who gets close to the first down, but is still gonna be five yards short up to the 46 yard line. Good, good scrambling mode there by Willie to find Scott Palmer, but still credit the Tiger defense for closing in when they had to. Good pass rush here and great coverage downfield forced Copeland to look to his secondary and third targets on the play. Didn't have anything to work with, rolled out, and just had absolutely nothing. Ditched it off to his fullback, Scott Palmer, who ended up picking up a few yards on the play. Stephen Wright back to punt it. And a much better punt this time as coach calls for the fair catch and will almost muff it but recovers it at his own 16 yard line where the Tigers will take the field again and look to put another touchdown on the board. Looking for a job? Companies including Schwann, Universal Forest Products, and Wal Walgreens will be holding a series of on-campus interviews here at Valdosta State University. Make sure to check out VSU Bulletin Board on cable channel 11 to find out information on these events and others around campus. First and 10, West Alabama at their own 16 yard line. Coach the lone receiver to the near side. And looks like that Ryder's gonna try and keep it again. Picked up another nice block by Chris Coach and is going to be dragged down by Everett Kitchens and Carlos Anderson at about the 20 yard line. This offense continues right where it left off, running the option to the left. Ryder keeps it himself and takes it down there for a few yard gain and they are really in a nice rhythm right now. Second down, six to go for the red and white West Alabama Tigers. I formation, coach to the far side. Handoff is gonna be to number one, Jaron Wright, who gets minimal yards on the play, but still is about one to two yards Aaron short of the first down. As there we see Coach Ashley Anders, the defensive genius in charge of the Black Swarm, trying to get his team to, hey, get in there, make tackles, force turnovers, and score points. Anders having to prepare for that pesky option attack of the West Alabama Tigers this week. Third down, one to go for the Tigers. Ryder hands it off to Jaron Wright, who gets, looks like he's gonna have enough yards for the first down, but we'll wait and see exactly where the spot will be placed. Good, good philosophy by Bobby Wallace. Don't go against something that doesn't work and stick with that run, picking up the first down. It is a first down, new series for West Alabama right at two minutes and 34 seconds to go here in the first quarter. First and 10 Tigers, three backs behind Reeder. And Reeder's gonna keep it. And he's being pressured to the last second. Great pressure there by number 57, Bo May, the DL from Apex, North Carolina, who's come out of nowhere. 
Bo May has really stepped it up and continues to put pressure through the middle of the defensive line and gets right of there just as he was about to throw that ball. Second down, 10 to go for West Alabama at their own 27-yard line. You can see that when the Tigers try and pass, the Blazers get in there and put pressure on Justin Reeder. They just need to stop him when he's running. And it looks like there's a little bit of motion <laughs> for the West Alabama team. And we'll get the call from our referee of today's game, Philip Kelly. It is going to be a false start on the Tigers, which will push them back five yards. Blazer defense needs to now look for that pass to Raiders' favorite receiver, Chris Coach, because you know he's going that way to pick up these yards that they just lost on this penalty. To who? Procedure Chris Coach. Oh, him. <laughs> Second down, 15 to go for the Tigers. Reader now in the shotgun formation with four receivers, two to each side. Snap to Reader. Looking, has a man, it's Couch, it's Coach. He beat his man, Carlos Anderson, to the inside and picks up 20 yards on the play. First down and 10, West Alabama at their own 45-yard line. I'm amazed they don't throw more, the West Alabama Tigers, because that receiver is quick and he has some great hands as we saw displayed on that play right there. Blazer defense finding it difficult to stick with this Tiger offense in the early going here in today's game. First and 10, Valdez State at the <laughs> West Alabama at their own 45 yard line. And that time, that running attack was going nowhere. As number 55, Marcus Worlds, the DL out of Blakely, Georgia, gets in there and makes the huge hit. See the handoff here. He had a few blockers on the play, but could not break through the line that Black Swarm defense came over to help and stuffed him, bringing up second and 10. West Alabama looking to put more points up on the scoreboard. They are leading this game 7-0 as we are under a minute and a half to go in the first quarter of play. Ryder behind the center. He's going to keep it. Picks up a nice block from number one, Jaron Wright, but it still doesn't mean anything as more great aggressive coverage by Sherrard Reynolds and number 37, Geo Blaylock tackles Reader on the play. Geo Blaylock, the linebacker, reading this option all the way, not falling for any fakes, and he comes over to help out on Sherrard Reynolds' hit there. Third down and nine to go for the Tigers at their own 45-yard line. Chris Coach. Look out for him. He's up on the far side of the screen, guarded by Leggett. Reader behind center. It's going to be a fake handoff. Reader has time, looking deep, has a man, and it's going to be caught by Chris Couch. What a catch by number 84. I'm speechless. That was one of the most remarkable catches I have ever seen. Maurice Leggett almost came down with it, tipped it. First off, look at the great pass rush. Number 94 on the play, Desert Duggar, falls down, continues to go after the quarterback, Ryder, who makes a beautiful pass that's almost intercepted by Maurice Leggett here. Instead, it's tipped up. I, I cannot believe that catch by Chris Coach. That is one of the best wide receivers you are going to see here in Division II football. Penalty flags on the play. We'll get the call here from our GSC refereeing crew. It's going to be illegal substitution, illegal participation on the Blazers, which will be half the distance to the goal. And that will put West Alabama in better field position now as they are inside the five yard line. They are at the two. First down and goal for West Alabama with the clock ticking down to six seconds to go in the first quarter and looks like that the Blazers or somebody is gonna call a timeout on the play. West Alabama is having to use their second timeout of the game. 
They didn't want a timeout, it appears on the play. They're claiming that the Blazers called timeout. And it was a timeout called by the Blazers, which raises issues because the clock was winding down. And West Alabama, they were just gonna let the clock roll down. They may have done that, or Bobby Wallace could have been up to his tricks again and had Ryder call, call for the ball right as that clock was about to run down and run a play real quick, because it didn't look like the Blazers had the right personnel in on that play. I'm still in shock over Chris Couch making that spectacular Chris grab. Coach. Chris Coach. Chris Coach is the real deal. He can just play. He is a baller, as they say. There's a reason why Coach is four times ahead of the rest of his receivers on West Alabama's squad. For all the latest in national, state, and local news, catch News 11 in focus each Thursday at 3 and 10 p.m. on VSU TV. That's in focus, 3 and 10 p.m. each Thursday on VSU TV. First down, goal to go for the Tigers at the Blazers' two-yard line, and I expect that the Tigers will run the ball here. And they will, and it looks like they're going to be stopped just short of the goal line. And that ends the first quarter of play here from Bazemar Hyder Stadium. Your score, West That's Alabama 7, Valdosta West State Alabama nothing. Seven, Valdosta State we'll be back nothing. with the second quarter of action here on VSU TV right after this. He graduated from one of the best medical schools. Walked into a built-in practice. As an Air Force flight surgeon, he's learned that not all battles are fought in the air. And to understand the stresses of high-speed flight, he has to experience them firsthand. So if you want to practice medicine in a more stimulating atmosphere, call 1-800-423-USAF. We're back here on VSU TV as we are set to start the second quarter of play here at Baysmore Hyder Stadium. The Blazers have a little bit of catching up to do as they are down seven nothing, and West Alabama is on the verge of putting in one more score as the handoff is gonna be to number one, Jaron Wright. No signal yet. Looks like that the Blazer Black Swarm stopped him again. It'll bring up third down and goal. Good stuff here as you see the running back gets tripped up over one of his linemen and could not find the end zone on the play. He's brought down near the line of scrimmage and that brings up third down. Third down, goal, goal to go for the Tigers at their own at Inside the Blazers' the one yard line. Chris Coach is back in the game to the far side of the field. Look out for a possible quarterback heave to the end zone as we've got a flag on the play. Looks like there's going to be false start or legal motion, and that will cause a coach to pull his hair out. Two men were in motion at the same time. Illegal motion, and that will push the Tigers back to the Blazer six-yard line. Look for Ryder to find his man, Chris Coach on a route that's gonna run into the back corner of the end zone. See if he can throw one over Maurice Leggett's head and see if Coach can come down with it. We'll see what Bobby Wallace comes up with on this third down and goal to go from the Blazers six. I formation, Ryder's gonna keep it. It's gonna be a botched reverse and it looks like the Blazers have recovered the fumble and they have. What a play by the Blazers to sniff out the option and the reverse to get the huge, huge turnover. That is a momentum shifter right there. West Al thought they were going to go up two scores. Instead, you see here on the replay, Ryder drops back, goes for the pitch to number five, Tyron Tomlin, who just didn't know the ball was coming. Num it looks like that maybe number five was confused on the play because Coach was running the opposite way. It looked like Coach was coming in for a reverse type play, but I don't think Tomlin knew what was going on there. Very irresponsible by number five, Tyrone Tomlin there. As now Rashawn Robinson breaks through the first line of Tiger defense to the 16, 16 17 yard line. 
Good enough for about an eight, nine yard pickup. Copeland takes the high snap and gives it to Rashawn Robinson, who's getting just about all the carries today. Cedric Jones is now in the ball game. Number eight has checked into the game. He is on the near side of the field, and it's gonna be a fake handoff to, I don't know who the handoff was to, but Rashawn Robinson takes a lick in the backfield, but there is a penalty on the play. Cedric Jones is injured. You don't know if he's just a decoy right now. If he wants Bobby Wallace to see number eight is out there and to mess around with his game plan to open up single coverage for his other receivers, such as Alan Tillman and Derek Tharp, or if Cedric Jones is just saying, you know what, we're not looking too hot without me right now, I might as well come in the game and just play through the pain. The penalty was a offsides call on West Alabama. And as soon as we say Cedric Jones is in the game, he comes out. Three receivers to the near side, Tyler Arndt, Jeffrey Felton, Alan Tillman, Derek Tharp to the far side for Willie Copeland. Snap to Copeland, looking deep, being pressured on the run, delivers a perfect pass to Alan Tillman over the middle of the field. Good enough for another VSU first down. Interesting again on the play, Clay Calloway, the former wide receiver, Turn quarterback was in, as you see on your screen, at halfback on a little delayed route there. And Copeland finds former quarterback Alan Tillman, who continues to look good as a wide receiver across the middle for a catch. First down and 10 to go for the Blazers at their own 33-yard line. Almost a perfect pass delivered by Copeland to Jeffrey Felton, but Felton lets it fall out of his hands for an incompletion. Copeland throws a really good ball. All the players in the team rave about how good a ball he throws. Good spiral. And he gets it right on the hands of his receivers. However, on that play, Felton could not hold on to it. You get the feeling today that the Blazers are running a much hyped up, more fast tempo offense than they're used to. Handoff to Rashawn Robinson. Breaks through. Keeps those legs churning down to about the 40. 344 yard line. It will be close to see if he pick up, picked up the first down on the play. Sean Robinson takes the ball from Willie Copeland there and picks up a bunch of yards on the play. Credit to these West Alabama Tigers. Their linebacking core refuses to allow a big play to happen on the running game. They have been there every time stuck in the run. Third down. Inches to go for the Blazers at their own 43 yard line. Copeland trying to draw the West Tiger. West Alabama defense all sides. Instead, it's a handoff to Rashawn Robinson, and he gets the first down easily into Tiger territory at the West Al 49-yard line. The past few weeks, we've seen Michael Terry get the majority of the carries. Here we're seeing Rashawn Robinson on your replay bursting out with a ton of speed today against this Tiger defensive attack, and he looks really good at running back today. He does averaging nearly four or five yards a carry. Cedric Jones, Jeffrey Felton, Tyler Arndt, and Alan Tillman are your receivers. Snap handoff is gonna to be to Clay Calloway, and he's going nowhere. The West Alabama defense was sniffing out a halfback draw, and they made the tackle. The pursuit was led by number 74. I don't know, his number's not on the roster. We'll just say number 74 made a good play. Interesting play call there, giving it to Clay Calloway at running back. I mean, we know that there are many other running backs on this Blazer squad who can take the handoff. Ooh, almost interception on the play. Number 33, Tariq Ali, the linebacker, wasn't even paying attention that the ball was coming his way. Had he been looking at Willie Tillman, he would have gone six points. Willie Copeland. Why did I say? Willie Tillman. Oh. You're mixing up two quarterbacks. But smart play there by Jeffrey Felton. Did not allow a Tiger to, to get that fumbled ball. Because technically it is a fumble when it's thrown behind the quarterback. And he jumped on top of it before West Isle could take it all the way for a touchdown. Third down and 11 for the Blazers. Copeland takes the snap. Being pressured. Running. Finds a man. Rashawn Robinson dropped it. He was looking at that first down marker and failed to make the catch. Copeland again failing to see a, a receiver downfield. He had Allen Tillman wide open way downfield. Guess he felt he could not get the ball there to him in time. 
And now it's going to bring on the punt team. Well, yeah, he had Rashawn Robinson open on the near side of the screen. Had he made the catch, he only had one man to beat before he picked up the first down. So credit Willie for seeing the open man on that play. Steven Wright into a tip to punt. A very nice punt at Couch calls for a fair catch and makes at his own 15-yard line. So the Blazers cannot capitalize on the fumble by West Alabama inside their own five-yard line. But they did move the ball out of their red zone, so somewhat of a positive turn of events there. The Office of Career Services is hosting a Fall Career Expo Tuesday, October 24th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the University Center's Magnolia Room. For more information, call 333-5942. First and 10, West Alabama at their own 15-yard line. Three-back formation, Chris Coach to the far side. Ryder's going to keep it being pressured, and he's going to go down. Big sack on the play by Kelvin Roberts, the preseason all-conference defensive end. Roberts is a quick defensive end. He breaks through that line. Look at that. And he gets right in Ryder's face and brings him down for the sack. Second down and 20 to go for the Tigers at their own five yard line. James Ryder behind center. Chris Coach this time to the near side of your television screen. It's going to be a handoff to number one, Jaron Wright, who takes it six yards on the play, which will bring up third down and 14 to go for the Tigers out of Livingston, Alabama. Good play call here as the running back's able to pick up a few yards on the play. However, it's still third and long. And I don't know if Bobby Wallace really wants to throw the ball here and risk an interception. Trying to be conservative. But we'll see as West Alabama is faced with a third down and 13 at their own 16-yard line. It will be a throw. Looking for the man. It's going to be tipped, almost intercepted by two Blazer defensemen, Le Maurice Leggett and Everett Kitchings, intended for Chris Coach. And this time, Maurice Leggett gets in and makes the good play. Good coverage downfield by Maurice Leggett. Leggett gets inside of Coach again, and he and Sean Harris almost come down with the ball. Oh, I'm sorry, Everett Kitchens. Back to punt it for West Alabama. Will be number 48, J.D. Wu. And it will go out of bounds at the Blazer. Referee is still walking it off. Still walking off at the Blazer 37-yard line. Or not at the Blazer 37-yard line. The Tiger 37-yard line. So excellent field position for the Blazers to hopefully put some points on that scoreboard. They need to score here, Neil. The Blazers the really Tigers. need to put some points on the board. Out comes the hatch attack. And it appears that we're getting some booing from the crowd. I don't know why, but we'll see. First and ten Two receivers to the near side. Two the receivers to the far side. Fake handoff to Deion Williams. Copeland looking, finds a man. It's Tyler Arndt, who is drilled out of bounds by number two, Kadane McBride, but not before he picks up about 15 yards on the play, and the Blazers are have a first down at the Tigers' 22-yard line. Good, good look here by Willie Copeland, who saw that the defenders who were near Tyler Orrin ended up dropping into zone coverage away from Orrin, who was able to pick up the first down on the reception. Three receivers to the far side, one to the near side. Willie Copeland behind the center, handoff to Deion Williams, and he should have kept on going, instead tried to cut it back. But Teddy Morris couldn't hold his block much longer, and Deion Williams gets about Deion two Williams yards the on the side. run. There we see Zach Williams getting set for hopefully a point after attempt, not a field goal attempt. 
Cedric Jones, Jeffrey Felton, Deion Williams in motion for Willie Copeland. It's going to be a fake to Deion Williams, and Copeland's going to keep the ball, gets about two yards on the play, down to the Tiger 14-yard line, and a big third down coming up for the Blazers, third down and four at the 16-yard line. Copeland calls his own number here, trying to just barrel through and get the first down. Unfortunately, he could not bring it up third and three now on the 14-yard line. Six minutes, 20 second, eight minutes, 19 minutes to go in the second half here. The first, second quarter, I mean. And Willie Copeland's looking deep, and it is going to be intercepted in the end zone by number 14, William Grice, the defensive back. It looks like Willie didn't see 14 trying to hit Jeffrey Felton, and 14 came in and made a very nice play. West Al has absolutely dominated this ball game on both sides of the ball. Copeland looking for a receiver deep, could not hit Jeffrey Felton there, threw it a few feet short of him. Good play by the, the secondary player there and picking up the interception. And now Coach Hatcher has a few words for Willie Copeland on the sidelines. Coach Hatcher not very pleased with his quarterback's performance there. And now the Tigers regain the ball and the momentum at their own 20 yard line as the handoff is gonna be to number one Jaron Wright, who gets about one to two yards on the play. Bring up a second down and eight to go. Seven minutes, 40 seconds to go in the first half here of play. Here we see the replay, the little handoff there by Ryder. Didn't really do much as he was stopped by the Black Swarm defense. Second down, eight to go for the Tigers at their own 22 yard line. Chris, coach here to the far, to the near side of, of your television screen. As Ryder's gonna keep it, then pitches it at the last second, but there is a flag on the play, which usually means in the backfield, holding on an offensive player. Tredexter Hamilton was the person carrying the ball on the play, or excuse me, Tyrone Tomlin was the running back. Here we see the option run to the left here. Good pitch by Ryder there to, to throw off a few defenders and try to get some yards on the play. The penalty is going to be a chop block called on the Tigers. That's a 15 yard penalty. If it's inside the 20 though, it's half the distance to the goal. So now West Alabama finds themselves looking at a second down and 20 at their own 10 yard line with just over seven minutes to go here in the first half of play in today's ball game. West Alabama coming out with a two tight end set, two running backs in the backfield, Chris Coach to the far side of the screen. Handoff is gonna be to number one, Jaron Wright who continues to push and push and keeps those legs churning down to the 26 yard line. A pickup of 16 yards on the play. Third down and four to go now for the Tigers. A nice 16 yard run here by Jaron Wright, who leads this rushing attack. Breaks off a few defenders there, able to squeak through and really help break into that 20 yard loss third they had. Shotgun, loss. shotgun formation now for the Tigers on third and four. Ryder's gonna take the snap and tries to have the draw play go, but number 47, Travis Harrison is there to say, not in my house, and stops the West Alabama offensive attack there and will bring up a punting situation. I don't understand going to the shotgun formation and calling the draw play there when you're leaving your running back without any blockers in front of him. He's had blockers all day and he's picked up huge yards. Why do it there? J.D. Wu is set to kick it off for the Tigers. Sherrod Reynolds set to return it for the Blazers, and Wu made it bounce early, and Sherrod Reynolds loses the ball on the play, and it looks like he still lost it. And the Tigers are celebrating, thinking they have the ball. No sign yet from the refs. Now there is a sign. West Alabama football. Sherrod Reynolds had no business trying to pick up that ball. That ball was bouncing around. It was a great punt. It was end over end on the ball, and he had no business even attempting to pick that ball up. You knew 
watching him go after the ball that a fumble was going to occur. The West Alabama faithful who made the trek from Livingston definitely have more to celebrate now than the Blazer faithful. And Coach Chris Hatcher, all he can do is scratch his head the is recovered by the and wonder what is going on here with this Blazer team as West Alabama has come in here. And like you said, Dustin, just taking complete control. That essentially was a 50-yard pass out of the hands of Ryder. It's as good as that. And now West Al picks up the ball on the other side of the 50-yard line. Chris Coach to the near side. Two backs in the backfield. As Ryder is going to keep the ball. Ball has come loose. Let's see now. Let's see what the refs are going to say. They're conferring. Let's see it here on our replay. Ryder dishes, uh, fakes the dish off, shows some athleticism here, and I can't see where the ball came loose. I cannot tell if his knee was down and where the ball came loose on the play. It was kind of hidden from our camera there. Refs are conferring. It is going to be Blazer football. Great defensive coverage and play there by the Black Swarm, and you're seeing turnovers. Uh, playing a big role in this ball game so far. It's nice to see the Blazer defense pick up this team. Last week they all felt horrible in the fact that they really didn't show up against Delta State last week. And every other game of the year except for last week, they have shown up and carried this team being one of the best defenses in the nation. Timeout is going to be called for by West Alabama with 5 minutes and 45 seconds to go. We're going to take a break. We'll come back with the rest of the first half action on VSU TV right after this. All over America, we're no longer just sedentary, we're stationary. And that's bad news for your bones. Because bones need weight-bearing activity to grow strong and stay strong. So get up, get out, get moving. A message from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. Never heard a word I say. Welcome back here on VSU TV. Five minutes and 45 seconds to go in the first half of play. There you see head coach Bobby Wallace of UWA arguing his heart's content with our referee in today's game, Philip Kelly, about that call. Coach Wallace believes that the, that the ground caused a fumble, but in Division II, you're not allowed to have instant replay, so the Tigers are going to have to live with a decision on the field. The Blazers are happy with that decision made on the field as they now have possession of the ball at their own 28-yard line. As Copeland going deep, has a man. It's Tyler Art, makes the first man miss and is brought down at the 44-yard line. Good enough for another Valdosta State first down. The Blazer offense really needs to drive downfield with about five minutes and 37 seconds to go here in the second quarter. Even though even though West Alabama is up, Dustin, it's been a very competitive game. So even if the Blazers don't score here, they can still come in the second half and make some noise there as Michael Terry is tripped up in the backfield by number 74, the unknown defensive player for West Alabama. Nice to see Michael, Michael Terry, Terry getting a touch side. in today's game as he was carted off the field last week at Delta State. Nice to Short see him healthy and playing again. Derek Tharp, Alan Tillman, Tyler Arndt, and Cedric Jones are the receivers in this formation. Second down, 10 to go for the Blazers. Copeland takes a snap. Good protection, finds Rashawn Robinson, and he drops his second consecutive pass. And you know Chris Hatcher will not be very upset with Rashawn Robinson at halftime. It's just unexcusable if a quarterback hits you in your hands, especially on a play like that where there is no one around you. You need to come down with the football and make a play. Another big third down conversion now awaits the Blazers as they bring in Reggie Vickers to the near side. Tyler Arndt, Jeffrey Felton, Alan Tillman to the far side. Clay Calloway is in the backfield for Willie Copeland. Copeland takes the snap, being pressured, trying to go deep. Hits a man, Alan Tillman 
over the middle, beats that zone coverage, and Valdosta State picks up another huge third down. Normally in that situation, Willie Copeland looks for number eight, Cedric Jones. Instead, he finds number nine, Alan Tillman, on the play on a slant coming across the middle of the field. Good look by Willie Copeland and waiting for his play to happen, not trying to force anything. I have to wonder if Cedric Jones is healthy, however. He's back on the field now. He was on the field before that play and was out for that one play, which was a crucial down. It could be a decoy. First and 10, Valdosta State at the West Alabama 35-yard line. Catches made by Cedric Jones, and they're going after that leg. West Alabama is good to see Cedric Jones back in the action, making his first catch with four minutes and 23 seconds to go in the half. Little play fake to Tyler Orrant from Copeland, who finds his man Cedric Jones a little hobbled up this, this week, and you can see from there he just did not want to take a hit. Copeland again takes a snap, handoff to Clay Calloway. Cedric Jones makes a nice block on the play, getting enough room for Calloway to pick up the Blazer first down at the Tigers' 18-yard line. This offense is looking for different ways to gain yards. This week going to Clay Calloway at running back. Huge block there in your screen by Cedric Jones, who even with the injury can still lay a hit on someone on offense. Four minutes to go in the first half. Still 7-0 West Alabama is our score. Deion Williams in motion. It is going to be to Deion Williams, and just not a very good job of blocking there by the Blazers' offensive line as Tim Kelly, the DE, gets in there again and makes another Deion TFL Williams or carry. tackle for loss. Good play by Tim Kelly there to stick with the play. He was being blocked and was falling to the ground when he made the tackle on Deion Williams. Second down and 15 to go for the Blazers at the Tigers' 22-yard line. Two receivers to each side of Willie Copeland. Copeland's gonna take the snap. Another time of good protection. Now he's being pressured. Now he's running on the play and he will step out of bounds or get pushed out of bounds at the 16 yard line. A pickup of about four yards on the play. More importantly though, he gets out of bounds to stop the clock. Copeland had absolutely nothing to work with downfield. Covered didn't sack. Didn't want to force anything and rolling out to his right is a problem because he is a lefty and has to turn his entire body if he wants to make a pass. So he took it himself, gained a few yards, didn't feel like sliding, so took the hit out of bounds. Third and seven at the 15-yard line of the Tigers. Derek Tharp in motion, snap to Copeland. Here comes the blitz. Nice job of VSU to protect, and now Copeland's having to fire on the run and hits Derek Tharp in the end zone, beats the coverage, and scores the first Blazer touchdown of the afternoon. Good play by Willie Copeland here as he found Tharp on this play, looking around, looking, some great, great blocking for him. He gets away from one defender, Deion Williams helping out in the backfield with a block, and he just lofts it, lofts it to the large Derek Tharp, who is as good a number two in this conference as there is. Point after by Zachary Williams is up and good. So your new score with three minutes and eight seconds to go in the first half. Valdosta State evens the score with West Alabama now tied at seven apiece. Copeland needs to look for Tharp more. To me, Derek Tharp is capable of being a number one. He has the skills to do it. However, he's had Cedric Jones in front of him every week this season. Derek Tharp to Willie Copeland needs to keep on happening in the red zone. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, the Blazer Sports reporters Holly Willis talks with head coach Sia Poyer about the, success, about the success of the Blazer volleyball team this season. Major props to the Lady Blazer volleyball team. Just doing a remarkable turnaround from not only last year, but two years ago. Now in contention for a GSC tournament appearance. Two years ago, that was unheard of. A turnaround for a VSU program and a tur completely turned around West Alabama program here, looking to put up seven more points on the board before the end of the half. Chad Gallahan into, 
in to kick it off for the Blazers. And UWA's Mr. Everything, Chris Coach, set to receive it at his 10-yard line. And the ball is in the air as Gallahan gets off a nice kick. Coach will take it at his own three-yard line. Trying to make people miss and goes down before he even reaches the 20-yard line. With just under three minutes to go here in the half, this West Alabama offense is going to probably need to go to the air if they really want to put up some more points on the board. However, Coach Wallace could want to play it the conservative way and work the ball downfield on the ground as he's been doing most of the day today. First down and 10 to go for the Tigers at their own nine yard line. Correction to be made, VSU missed their point after attempt, so the score is now 7-6 and not 7-7 as Reader takes a snap and takes a huge hit on the play from the speedy Sherrard Reynolds and goes down at the 11 yard line. So instead of being 7-7, you're now down by one Valdosta State with less than three minutes to go in the first half. Here you see the option run again by James Reeder. He couldn't break away to the outside far enough to get away from Sherrod Reynolds who came up from his free safety position and read the play perfectly. It looks like West Alabama might just be content to take this game into halftime, but you'll never know with Bobby Wallace at the helm. Second down, eight to go for the Tigers. Handoff is gonna be to number one, Jaron Wright and he gets about six yards on the play. Looks like they're gonna, there's going to be a timeout called on the play by Valdosta State, right which carry. will be their second timeout of the half. Good call by Coach Hatcher there, called timeout. It's third and two to go for the first down, and he's looking to try to get that ball back right before the half and put up some points. For your favorite spooky oh. music, listen to Skip Gildersleeve as he celebrates Halloween all this month during Lest We Forget. Nice. WBVS 90.9 Blaze FM celebrates over 30 years of music on the edge every Sunday at 9 p.m. until midnight. For requests, call 333-5661. And don't forget the 9th Annual Oingo Boingo Festival, festival on October the 29th. There we see Travis Taylor, a very valuable part of this Blazer offensive attack. As you all remember, he suffered a very serious knee, ankle injury in the Arkansas Tech game. They had to cart him off the field and take him to the hospital. Just a good sight to see Taylor out with his teammates, even though his season is pretty much over with that bad ankle injury, but good to see him out here supporting his teammates. Good to see him up and walking and being around his teammates, period. Third down and two to go for the Tigers at their own 17-yard line. Just under two minutes to go in the first half. Chris Coach is on the near side of the screen, and it looks like that West Alabama is going to have to call their, final, their second timeout. Timeout taken by the Tigers. Of the first half. And all of a sudden, we'll come back here on VSU TV with the final two minutes right after this. Welcome to Valdosta State University. Beautiful, isn't it? Are you upset about pesticides in your food, crude oil in your oceans, littering in our streets, clear cutting of national forests, the killing of dolphins and sea turtles, destruction of wetlands? Now's the time to join Students Against Violating the Environment. Save helps by raising awareness among the student and faculty body about environmental issues on campus, in the community, and around the world. It's easy to make a difference. Simply call this number and join Save. Think globally, act locally. Welcome back to VSU TV as we give you the final two minutes of the first half here between West Alabama and Valdosta State. West Alabama up seven to six and faced with a third down and two from their own 17 yard line. Reader hands it off. No one says he's gonna keep it, but is met immediately by number 49, Joseph Fires McCauley. The and looks the like the Blazers the are gonna use their final timeout of the first half to get good field position. 
the freshman out of New Smyrna, Florida, got penetration on the play and got a little help from, from defensive end Kelvin Roberts to bring down the quarterback. And you know what, Joseph McCauley is really impressed this year at linebacker. He has been a great addition to this Black Swarm defense, always stepping up for the big play. Valdosta State University's Small Business Development Center is hosting a seminar entitled Starting Your Own Business this Thursday, October 26th from 6 to 8.30 p.m. in room 102 of Thaxton Hall on BSU's North Campus. Interested parties must, must pre-register and submit a registration fee by October the 25th. For more information, call 245-3738. There we see the lovable mascot for the BSU Blazers, Blaze. Used to be a dragon, now he's a football player with a flame for a head. Kind of looks like a match. J.D. Wu set to kick it off for the Tigers, and Sherrod Reynolds set to receive it at the West Alabama 45-yard line. Wu takes a snap, almost blocked on the play, and Sherrod this time is going to let it roll, and it will be down at the VSU 49-yard line, still very good field position for the Blazers with one minute and 41 seconds to go in the first half to try and get some more points up on the board. Right here, Coach Hatcher doesn't just want some points on the board, he expects it out of this offense. This is a crucial point in the game. They will be getting the ball back in the second half. If they can put some points on the board here and then put some points on the board in their opening drive of the second half, it could be huge for the Blazer attack. Two receivers to each of the sides of Willie Copeland as he takes the snap. Blitz is coming, but finds the man wide open. It's Clay Calloway, and he will wisely step out of bounds at the Copeland West Alabama 43-yard line. Good enough for an eight-yard pickup. I like seeing Clay Calloway coming out of the backfield for receptions if we see her on our replay. He's a talented football player who can do many things. He was a good wide receiver last year and he proved to be a decent quarterback in spring practice this year. Copeland gets the snap, finds Cedric Jones, who takes a vicious hit, but still picks up enough yards to move the chains again. First and 10 VSU at the West Alabama 32 yard line. If I'm not mistaken, this might be the first game that Clay Calloway has played since his injury. Good to see him back on the field. Willie Copeland back to, takes it. Finds Tyler Arndt to the near side, steps out of bounds again. The Blazers executing to perfection here in the final minutes of the first half. Smart football, short, crisp passes, getting out of bounds for the receivers. Copeland finds Arndt on a short route and he gets his way out of bounds, makes his way out of bounds to stop the clock. Jones and Arndt to the near side, Parker and Tharp to the far side. Copeland takes a snap, finds Cedric Jones at the 19-yard line, but a flag is on the play. Could be an offsides on the West Alabama Tigers. And you're seeing now VSU finding the sink, finding the, the rhythm that Coach Hatcher likes to have. It will be indeed an offsides call on the Tigers. We'll wait to see what the Blazers do on this penalty. The penalty is offsides, charged to the Tigers. They will decline the it. Will be so it will be a first Blazers. down and 10 for first the Blazers down. at the West Alabama 18 yard line. One minute, 16 seconds to go here in the first half as Copeland, again, short, crisp, crisp pass. Finds Tyler Arndt, goes out of bounds to the 15 yard line. Might have even been tipped at the line of scrimmage. Good play calls here from Hatcher. The slants continue to work and the short routes are working. Looks like he hit off a hand or a helmet over at the line of scrimmage, but Tyler Arndt was able to catch the ball, get out of bounds for a two yard gain. Two receivers to each side as the snap is gonna be to Cedric Jones and he's still moving, he's still pushing. He is into the end zone and Cedric Jones is more than healthy. He just made a touchdown score. Cedric Jones is huge in this offense, and we just saw what kind of a player he is. He picks up the wide receiver screen here, and he gets a few blocks, but he barreled his way into the end zone. What a play by Cedric Jones. 
the freshman continues to impress everyone with his ability to find the end zone and make big plays. Zach Williams into attempt the PAT. This time it's up, and this time it's good. So your score now with one minute and four seconds to go in the first half of play. VSU is now up on West Alabama, 13 to seven. And I wasn't gonna mention to you when Cedric Jones was going off the field, he, he did seem to favor one leg over the other, which does signal that he's not 100% just quite yet. But he knows he's needed in this offensive attack. Without Cedric Jones, this wide receiver core is very good, but they lack a number one. Cedric Jones is the number one, even though he's just a freshman. Cedric Jones is the guy Willie Copeland turns to when he needs a big play. We've seen it time and time again. Cedric Jones will turn these short screens into 70-yard runs. Remember, coming up at halftime, Holly Willis will talk with head volleyball coach Sia Poyer about the success of the Blazer volleyball squad this season. Coming down to the wire, for Lady Blazer Volleyball. They have three more conference matches to try and position themselves into the top four in the Gulf South Conference Eastern Division. Top four teams in each division makes the volleyball tournament, which will be held, I believe, at North Alabama. Chris Coach set to receive the kick from Chad Gallahan, and the ball is in the air. And Coach takes it at his own four yard line, has a little bit of an alley before it is swarmed Chris in the by the Blazers special teams unit. He brings it back to the West Alabama Less than one minute to go here in the first half the of action. And it's been a very entertaining and competitive first half of play. West Alabama has lost a little bit of momentum with VSU now putting a few more points to the board, now leading 13 to seven with under a minute to go here in the half. But this offense is good. West Alabama has a very good offense. And if I were the Black Swarm defense, I'd be afraid of Chris Coach taking over this last 54 seconds. There was a penalty on that play. It was offsides against the Blazers. One of the Blazers return men was in motion before the ball was kicked. So instead of being kicked, instead of being kicked off at the 35, the Tigers have chosen to have the Blazers re-kick it, this time at their 30-yard line. So expect better field position the by the Tigers the as Chad Gallahan puts the ball in the air for a second time. And Coach still gets it at his four-yard line. But this time, Coach has an alley and he will be forced out of bounds by number 36, Greg Petty, Chris at about the 22, 23 the yard, line. At the yard line. The first, the first play of this first drive season. for the Tigers will be indicative of how they go about this last 44 seconds. If they're gonna let the clock run out or if they're gonna try to drive downfield in 44 seconds to put up another score. They're coming out in their usual formation, one receiver, and that is Chris Coach, to the near side of the screen. Two backs in the backfield. Handoff is going to be to Jaron Wright, and he gets minimal yards in the play, and the clock is continuing to roll. Less than 30 seconds to go in the first half of action here, and it appears that West Alabama will let the clock roll out and will take this 13 to seven deficit into the locker room. As the clock is continuing to roll down to five, four, three, and that Let's is it. We have half reached halftime here at Baysmore Hyder Stadium 13, with your score, Valdosta State 13, West Alabama seven. And now Holly Willis of the Blazer Sports Report talks with Blazer volleyball coach Sia Poyer on a successful season and the hopeful road to the GSC tournament. We'll be back with the second half after that report. After a win over Alabama Huntsville on Thursday night, the VSU volleyball team extended its win streak to five games. They currently sit at 17 and 13 on the season, the first time they have been over 500 in several seasons. 
Head coach Sia Poyer is extremely happy about the success of this year's team. But it, it feels nice to, um, I guess, to, you know, because we knew from the beginning that we could achieve this and uh, went through some rough times in the beginning and uh, the fact that the girls hung in there and they somewhat believed in what I was, you know, trying to teach them. Although the girls are playing well, Coach Poyer says that the key to making it to the conference tournament is to continue winning. You know, in order to guarantee us to go to the conference tournament, um, we were looking at some scenarios of what could happen. Um, you know, if we were to lose certain certain games, uh, we can still get in with a six and six record. The Blazers are now third in the GSC East Division, sitting behind only nationally ranked North Alabama and West Florida. The girls will take on the West Alabama Tigers today, who are one and eight in conference and eight and twenty overall. For the Blazer Sports Report, I'm Holly Willis. Now back to Bazemore Hyder Stadium. There's a naval battle being fought on land by forces armed only with commitment and compassion. Because every day, Navy volunteers combat homelessness, hunger, loneliness, and illiteracy by initiating community programs that touch people's lives. And while their exploits aren't honored with medals, it's hard to imagine a more moving tribute. A beautiful university under the palms and pines of South Georgia. Just above the Florida border. Halfway between Atlanta and Orlando. We are Valdosta State University. A standing academics, a showplace for the arts. And the home of champions. Vision. Success. And you. Prepare for your world by coming to ours. Building for our next century, Valdosta State University. Guys, what do you got? Got a 28-year-old black male, got three gunshot wounds in the chest. One upper chest, one lower chest, one center. Bleeding a lot. There are two paths a child can take. Sir, try not to move. We have a 28-year-old male. For over 25 years, we've been helping children choose the right one. Communities and schools, helping kids stay in school and prepare for life. Welcome back here on VSU TV as we are set to bring you the second half of action here in a very highly competitive game here at Baysmore Hyder Stadium. Valdosta State is up by 6, 13 to 7 at halftime. They will receive to start the second half. Reynolds and Leggett back to receive the kick from J.D. Wu, and the ball is in the air. Sherrard takes it at his goal line and has some room before he is met abruptly by number seven, Lewis Thompson, and number two, Kadane McBride, and the Blazers will start at their own 20-yard line. Willie Copeland, as of the end of the first half, is 19 for 24 on the day, 180 yards, one interception, and two touchdowns thrown today. Copeland came on late in the second half, showing us how capable he is of leading this offensive attack. Let's see if it carried over to the second half. First and 10 for the Blazers at their own 20 yard line. Two receivers to the near side, one to the far side. Handoff to Sean Robinson. He tries to squirt through the UWA defense, but it doesn't work as he picks up one yard on the draw. Chris Hatcher there. A little bit pleased with his offensive performance in the first half, but definitely not very excited that he is, Blazers only scored 13 points on the day. Second down, nine to go for the Blazers as Copeland finds Jeffrey Felton wide open in the middle on a slant pattern and picks up big yards on the play. Good enough for a Blazer first down at their own 37 yard line. Copeland co goes across the middle to Jeffrey Felton out of C Crisp County, Georgia. And Felton picks up a few yards on the play. It looked really good. Let's see if Copeland continues to hook up with the rest of his receivers. Fake handoff to Rashawn Robinson. Finds Tyler Arndt in the, on the near side of the field. 
Tyler goes out of bounds at the Blazer 45 yard line. That's a good eight yard pickup on the play. Second down and two for the Blazers. Copeland commanding this offense, throwing a lot of short routes, but he's working his way downfield very quickly. Three receivers to the, to the far side, one to the near side. Handoff is going to be to Rashawn Robinson, who picks up enough yards for a new set of downs. First down, Blazers at the Blazer 49-yard line. You've seen Rashawn Robinson have a lot of carries in this ball game today. As we see in the replay, Copeland gave the ball off to Robinson, who was able to pick up the first down. This offense without Cedric Jones, however, is, doesn't seem to be able to make the big play. First and 10 for the Blazers. And again, Alan Tillman almost cost Blazers six by him himself being upset that he dropped the ball, almost forgot that that play could have been live. And that's a quarterback, now at wide receiver. He probably isn't used to having that kind of disappointment in a single play and having that kind of effects possible by him just taking his head away from the game. One receiver to the near side, two receivers to the far side as Copeland drops back. Has plenty of time, tries to go over the middle to Allen Tillman, but leaves it well short of his, inten of his intended receiver. And now the Blazers are forced with a third down and 10 from their own 49 yard line. I think Copeland had no intent of actually completing a pass in the play. I think he was just throwing it away into the ground. Three receivers to the far side, one to the near side for Valdosta State. As there might have, this might be a free play. So Copeland trying to rush, trying to rush, being pressured, still on his feet. What moves by Willie Copeland, and he's going to run it. There is still a penalty on the play, and he gets about four yards on the play after running for about 25 altogether. A lot of effort for just a four-yard gain. I'm pretty sure this penalty is going to be declined, but Willie Copeland was all over the field on that play. And I'm sure he feels like he deserved more than a four-yard gain on that. There is an injured Tiger on the field. It's number 58, Jacoby Ivory, the player who made the tackle for the Tigers. Now he's sitting up. Good to see. The penalty is going to, be, going to be called against West Alabama, an offsides penalty. So the Blazers will definitely take the five yards and repeat the third down. Play started to remind me of the play against, uh, against Wachita Baptist where Copeland was rolling around trying to find something and then hit Allen Tillman for a 70-yard touchdown. However, I'm sure the Blazers at this point in the game with the way West Alabama has been playing all day will take the four-yard gain. Third down and about six yards to go from the West Alabama 46-yard line. VSU Cable Channel 11 will bring you up-to-date election results on Tuesday, November 7th, starting at 8 p.m. It will cover all the local and state results, and that is third Tuesday, November 7th, starting at 8 p.m. Vote 2006. Third down and five to go as Copeland fakes the handoff to Clay Calloway. Going deep, finds a man. It's Tyler Arndt. Puts it right in between West Alabama coverage. And that pass is good enough for a Blazer first down. I really like Tyler Arndt as the receiver in the slot. As you see in the replay, Copeland finds Arndt out of the slot, going through the defenders there. I really like him. He has some short hands and is able to maintain his hands on the ball every time he gets hit. Shotgun formation again for the Blazers as Copeland connects, almost connects with his tight end, Zach Parker, who almost made an astounding one-handed grab. Instead, it falls incomplete. And it will be second down and 10 for the Blazers at the West Alabama 39-yard line, 34-yard line. First intended pass on the day for Zach Parker, who looks like he's staying in for the next play. The Blazers today have normally tried to spread it out more speed throughout the entire receiving core, but now they're keeping Parker in because he has some short hands in the red zone. Two receivers to the far side. Raymond Thomas to the near side as Copeland has time. This time finds Zach Parker who drops it again. Just as I say he has short hands, Zach Parker drops a 
possible reception there. None of the receivers were really able to get open. I'm surprised Copeland didn't try to throw the ball away and uh, get out of the pocket, but nonetheless, brings up third down and 10 for the Blazers. Well, credit West Alabama for having for very Blazers. good coverage in today's ball game. Full receiver formation for the Blazers. Third down and 10 from the West Alabama 34 yard line. Snap to Copeland. No blitz on the play. Instead, Copeland fires a bullet complete to number nine, Allen Tillman. Copeland's takes it inside the West nine. Alabama 20. And it's good Blazer. enough for another Blazer first down. You know, we didn't see much of Allen Tillman at quarterback, but I can't imagine him being a better quarterback than he is wide receiver. He is a very good wide receiver, Neil. He has very good hands for a guy who really hasn't played the position, and he is quick and not afraid to go across the middle, as we just saw in that play. Scott Palmer and Raymond Thomas to the near side. Jeffrey Felton, Zach Parker to the far side for Willie Copeland. It's going to be a draw. Copeland has a defense biting. Still on the move. Still going. Tackled at the 11-yard line. What a good call by Coach Hatcher and Coach Dean for a quarterback sneak. Copeland obviously calling his own number the entire way. Didn't even bother to do a play fake. Scott Palmer tries to lay on a block there. Gets a little bit of the man. And Copeland's able to make a great play here and bring them closer to a touchdown. Handoff is going to be to Clay Callaway, and he's going nowhere. Great defensive pressure and great defensive tackling there by number 58, Jacoby Avery, who has gotten in several plays in today's ball game, the junior out of Granada, Mississippi. So now Coach Hatcher and his Blazer offense, they're faced with a third and four from the West Alabama 14-yard line. Bunched formation for the Blazers. Parker takes the snap, blitz is coming. Good job of protection by the Blazers and Copeland just misses Reggie Vickers coming across the middle of the field and it will be an incomplete pass. Vickers had the opportunity on that play to make a great reception as there was nobody on his right side of him. If Copeland could have gotten the ball a little softer to his right, it would have been a six point score for the Blazers. Zachary Williams now in to attempt the field goal, which will be about 30 yards away from the left hash. Snap is good, kick is up, and it is good. So the Blazers do put some points on their first drive of the second half, but it is not a touchdown, it is three points. So your new score with 11 minutes and 11 seconds to go. In the third quarter of play, Valdosta State now finds themselves up by a score of 16 to seven. You saw the Blazer offense come out, and we're not used to seeing these intermediate, quick outlet passes, but in today's ball game, it seems to be catching West Alabama off guard. Like I said earlier, without Cedric Jones in on every play, the Blazer offensive attack really lacks the ability for the big play. They can't, they don't have anyone on the team who's really gonna make that slant into what Cedric Jones made it into. I really want to see Derek Tharp step it up here in the second half and try to make a big play for the Blazers. I think he has the ability to do it. It's just a matter of it actually happening on the field. Every Thursday from 8 to 10 p.m., listen to WBBS 90.9 Blaze FM for the X's and O's show. Join AMAC, Big Red, and Fat Flyer as they bring you Valasta's only rock talk sports radio program. Seven years on the air. Call in with your sports opinions at 333-5661. That's the X's and O's show. Jock talk without the itch. Chad Gallahan set to kick it off for Valdosta State. Set to receive it deep is number 10, Dewan White, the freshman out of Demopolis, Alabama, and the ball is in the air. White takes it at his own four yard line and is pushed out of bounds at about the 20 yard line and here come the here comes the tiger offensive Number attack 10, which 
did a pretty good job in the first half, Dustin. They did do a good job. Uh, Jaron Wright led the rushing attack with 48 yards in the day, but quarterback James Ryder had 30 yards in the day for himself. He also was four for seven today in the air for 90 yards. And Chris Coach, of course, leads this receiving core. Three receptions, 87 yards, including one 50-yard reception. Three back formation, one receiver formation for the Tigers as, Re as Reeder keeps it, pitches it at the last second. Great job there by James Ryder to keep it until the last second. Pitched it off to Tyrone Tomlin who gets Number close five, to the Tyrone first down. With the carry. And there appear to be two Tigers down on the field, both Tomlin and it looks like Chris Coach is down on the field and the Tigers cannot afford to have this superb playmaker be out for any amount of time. Credit to Mike Cullen, the linebacker for the Blazers in that play. He was very quick in getting to Ryder before Ryder eventually did, did pitch, pitch the ball off. But Cullen was very quick in penetrating through the line and making a hit on the quarterback and that's going to be crucial in this linebacking core now in the second half to stop that option run. Good sign to see that Coach is up and walking off on his own power. I imagine we will definitely see him in the game as soon as he recovers from his injury. Second down and four to go for the Tigers at their own 26-yard line. Two-back formation. Handoff is going to be to number five, Tyrone Tomlin, who is met immediately. Pursuit on that play was led by number 47, Travis Harrison. Travis Jared Harrison and Bo May were the main hitters on that play. Look at Bo May here, just break through the offensive line, get some help there by Lavaris Dollar. William Monfort comes over as well as Sean Harrison, Travis Harrison. Big stuff for the Blazer Black Swarm defense there. Two yard loss on the play brings up now a third down and six for the West Alabama Tigers. Flex bone formation, one receiver to each side of James Ryder. Nine minutes and 40 seconds to go in the third quarter. Ryder is going to keep it and it looks like he will try and push and will have enough momentum to get past the sticks and pick up a Tiger first down. Or excuse me, it looks like that they're going to mark him just short, and it will be fourth down and in inches for the Tigers. Look at Ryder, though, push his way through the defenders, and he's able to tuck the ball in and hold on to it. Credit him for having the guts to make that play there. Bobby Wallace has not sent out his punt team yet, and it is, in fact, his offense will stay on the field. Fourth down and in inches to go for the West Alabama Tigers. Ryder is gonna hand it off to Jaron Wright and he will pick up enough yards or it appears at first glance and it will be indeed a Tiger first down and Coach Anders thought his defense had stopped the Tiger offense but just not enough push against the Tiger offense. The back did break the plane of the first down marker and he was pushed back after breaking that play, and therefore it is still a first down. Dewan White to the near side, as there appears to be a flag on the play. It is going to be illegal participation on the Tigers. Too many men on the field. You don't want to have that because that's just cheating. I mean, it would, it would help them a lot on offense, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'd love to have 12 guys in offense when the defense has 11. It's a good strategy by Coach Bobby Wallace. Now we know why he won those three national titles. That's, that's good color commentary right there, Dustin. Good job. First and 15 for the Tigers at their own 26-yard line. Man in motion. Ryder's going to keep it. Looks like they're trying to get the option going again. He fakes the option and is dragged out of bounds. The clock is still going. He will be pushed out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Good enough for about a eight-yard gain on the play. Here with the option, Ryder takes it himself. Good fake, though. Ryder takes it around right, 
fakes the pitch there. I really like that, but uh, he's met by Cullen, Mike Cullen and uh, William Montfort, who stop, it from, stop him from getting a first down. It's now third and seven for the Tigers. Second and seven, for the Tigers. Second and seven to go for West yards. Alabama. Close, we're just one down off. Second and seven at their own 34 yard line. Ryder's gonna keep it, tries the option, almost throws it away, but great hands there by his running back, Tyrone Tomlin, to keep the hand, to keep his hand, excuse me, it's Josh not Tyrone Jones. Tomlin, it's Josh Jones. Good hands by Jones Goes to down. keep possession of the game, of the ball, as they see Coach down. Anders barking out instructions for his defense. Third down and nine to go, shotgun formation for the Tigers. Reader now barking out instructions himself to his offensive line. Two receivers to each side. Snap to Reader. It's going to be a quarterback draw, and that's going nowhere. Great upfield presence there by the Black Swarm defensive line. And the question is, where is their stud wide receiver, Chris Coach? Haven't seen him in on any plays since that injury, probably being tended to. And without his presence, just his presence alone gives them ability to make a big play, forcing the Blazers into different co different coverage schemes. Chris Coach is still seeming, receiving medical medical attention down on the West Alabama sideline. J.D. Wu punts it to Tyler Arndt, who's going to let that bounce out of bounds at about the 44, 45 yard line of the Blazers. So a very good field, field position for Willie Copeland and the offense to start their possession with. This Friday, October 27th at 10 a.m., the VSU Music Department is sponsoring a Valdosta Symphony Orchestra Youth Concert in Whitehead Auditorium. For reservations, call 333-2150. Willie Copeland and the Blazer offense under the sideline instruction of Coach Chris Hatcher takes the field up 16 to seven with just under six minutes to go in the third quarter. Copeland being pressured, avoids the tackle, on the move, going across field and the pass is going to be tipped and intercepted on the play by D. Sprints, who is still moving. He's still going tackled at the 31 yard line. D. Spence with a remarkable Interception, and there is a Tiger down on the field. He is now getting up, as we see here, the replay. Let's watch this play here. Willie Copeland drops back to pass. He doesn't have anything to work with here. Breaks off a tackle. Now watch the pass here. Let's see if this ball actually hits the ground or hits a defender and stays in the air. Copeland hits Reggie Vickers. The ball looks like it was possibly down or kicked up by a defender or Reggie Vickers. Either way, it's going to be ruled an interception. They cannot go back and change the call. From our view, we could not see if the ball had hit the ground or if it was a real interception. We're going to take a break here on VSU TV. We'll be back with the final minutes of the third quarter after this. Do you know how many kids are risking their health by eating unhealthy foods, stuffing themselves, and not getting any exercise? Oh, thank goodness, you got here just in time. Where's the problem? In there. Hey, what's going on? What are you doing? Here, try this, the original fast food. Doctors know that our children need a diet rich in fruits, vegetables, high-fiber vegetarian foods to help them grow up healthy. Call for a free booklet or visit kidsgethealthy.org. Welcome back here on VSU TV. The injured players for West Alabama were Tim Kelly and D. Spence. They're up moving off, moving on their own power. Let's take another look at this replay here, Dustin. Watch the replay closely. Watch that ball. It's moving around. It's moving around. And it does appear to have touched the ground and squirted out. The ball looks like it was down there and a blown call unfortunately leads to good field position, positioning for West Alabama. Credit our cameraman with that excellent coverage. Good shot there. Now we're faced with a first down and 10 for the West Alabama Tigers as Maurice Leggett drags down the ball carrier after about a two, three yard gain on the play. So 
the, Blaze, the Tigers catch a break, and now it will be up to the Black Swarm defense to prohibit the Tigers from capitalizing on that break. The Tigers come out quickly, much like the Blazers did in the first half, get their call in from the sideline as James Reeder is from the shotgun and he's looking deep. He's got a man intended for number 81, Andre Epps, the junior receiver out of Mobile, Alabama. And like you said, Dustin, without Chris coaching there, the offense is really struggling. Both teams are missing their number one receivers and it shows in their inability to make the big plays without both of them. Four receiver formation for West Alabama. James Reeder takes a snap, looking deep, has a man, and it's not Chris Coach, but it's Sherrard Reynolds. So Coach was in the game, but Reeder led him too much, and Sherrard Reynolds makes UWA pay. Good play by Sherrod Reynolds, who read Reader the entire time, watching his eyes. His eyes never left Chris Coach, and Sherrod Reynolds was able to capitalize on the overthrow by Reader. So after Valdas to take, after Valdas to State quote quote turns it over, an interception by Sherrod Reynolds of James Reader gets the Blazers back in business. However, they have to march 91 yards to get a touchdown. First and 10 for the Blazers at their own nine yard line. Handoff is gonna be to Michael Terry. He is dragged down. Tackle led on the play by number two, Kadane McBride, the linebacker out of Lakeland, Florida. There we see Coach Hatcher and Coach Bostic before the replay. And here on the replay, Michael Terry takes the ball, but unfortunately cannot barrel over anyone like we've seen him do a bunch of times this year. Willie Copeland takes a snap, finds Tyler Arndt, goes out of bounds at about the 16-yard line. About a 7-8 yard pickup on the play. Coach Hatcher trying to get all of his receivers into this game. Because of that absence of Cedric Jones, the Blazers are having to look for more people. They're looking for someone else to be the playmaker today. Third down and two. Copeland looking, has a man. Tyler Arndt makes his man miss and picks up an additional five yards on the play and gets hit out of bounds by Jacoby, A Jacoby Avery at the 29-yard line. First and 10 for the Blazers. At 5'10", 163 pounds, the senior Tyler Arndt really plays above his, his size. He has an ability to play above his size, and he's not scared of taking a hit like that and going out of bounds. Copeland, little slant pass again to Tyler Arndt. Out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Well, the way he's getting out of bounds, maybe he is afraid to take a big lick. Uh, he's taken a few hits today, but a lot of his routes he's running lead him towards the sideline, so he might as well just stop the clock for the Blazer offense. Tyler Art, Raymond Thomas, Michael Terry to the near side, Alan Tillman to, to the far side, and the pass is gonna be to Tyler Art, who again gets near the sideline, isn't stopped out of bounds, but does pick up enough yards for a first down at the VSU 42 yard line. Art calling to come off the field, needing a substitution after limping a little bit after that play, but he has been able to make a few nice plays today for the Blazers. Nothing really huge, but he consistently gains yardage, and that's always great for an offense. Handoff is going to be to Michael Terry, and he is met immediately at the line of scrimmage for a pickup a pick of about two to three yards on the play. So Michael Terry getting some action along with Rashawn Robinson. Haven't, haven't seen Chad Bryant at all in today's ball game. Oddly enough, Chad Bryant was really the starter at the beginning of the year, and he's been impressive as of the other two. A lot more Deion Williams and Rashawn Robinson today, though. Snap to Copeland, being pressured. Dot as he hits Rashawn Robinson, the words couldn't come out of my mouth fast enough. I tried to say running back screen, but I couldn't say it. But there is a flag on the play. As stands, the Blazers picked up about six yards. But let's check out what this penalty is going to be on. And Coach Hatcher is not very happy with this call. 
Let's see what our referee says. They're going to disregard the flag, so the play will stand. It will be a six-yard gain on the play, and will bring up a third down and two to go. Excuse me, third down and four for the Blazers. They have to get to the West Alabama 48-yard line. Rashawn Robinson, Dedrick Smith now into the ball game to the far near side of the screen. Instead, the catch, the catch is going to be made by Zach Parker making one of his more than average catches. Those sticky hands finally coming into use for Zach Parker. This could be key because we saw earlier in the season, whenever Copeland got into trouble, it was Parker he found. It was Parker he found right at the end of that opening game against Albany State to drive the, the Blazers downfield. Maybe Zach Parker is going to be worked into the offense a little more to, uh, for the rest of the game because in the first half he wasn't used at all. Five receivers for the Blazers. Rashawn Robinson in motion. Snap to Copeland. Finds Derek Tharp. And it looks like that that play is going nowhere as looks like some illegal blocking might have occurred on the Blazers as the West Alabama sideline was up in roar. Here we see Copeland find Tharp. A little bit of a wobbly ball there, but see Tharp almost had the breakaway into open field. Couldn't get past one defender. And credit the defender for bringing him down. The penalty was on wide receiver Dedrick Smith, the sophomore out of Hawkinsville, Georgia, for holding on that call. And when two flags come in, especially one from the side judge in the back, you know it was pretty obvious. One of the first offensive penalties we've seen all day for Valdosta State, which is always good when you're talking about a Coach Hatcher offense. First down and 18 to go for the Blazers. Copeland over the middle, finds Jeffrey Felton, who cannot hold on to the ball. It was a little bit high, but Jeffrey Felton had both hands on that ball and should have made that catch. Felton, another one of the undersized receivers of this uh, core of wide receivers for the Blazers. Just maybe if he was another inch taller, comes down with that ball. Second down and 21 to go. Or second down and long to go for the Blazers anyway. Snap to Copeland, feeling the heat. He's gonna take off, but there's another flag on the play and that will be a holding call on the Blazers and I believe the guilty party is gonna be number 56, Gerald Davis the 300 pound junior from Greensboro, Georgia. Usually, Dustin, when the ref throws a flag in the backfield, it's not going to be a good call. And you know, their formation is susceptible to the hold. An offensive line who has to deal with a shotgun offense, yes, there will be tons of big plays made by the quarterback and the receivers deep downfield, but it's very difficult to maintain your blocking patterns when you're needing to defend against a quarterback who's four steps behind you. The Blazers now find themselves with a second down and a mile. They are at their own 41-yard line and need to get to the West Alabama 30-yard line. Snap to Copeland, going to the other side of the field, finds Reggie Vickers, who was brought down after about a five-yard gain on the play. It will bring up a third down and about 20 yards for the Blazers. Copeland rolls out to his right there, comes around and throws to his left, finds Vickers, whose lead blocker, number 25, Donnie Powell, actually fell down on the play, preventing Vickers from making anything really happen there. Less than one minute and 30 seconds to go in the third quarter of play. Valdosta State still up 16 to seven. Four receiver formation for the Blazers as the Tigers are playing real deep coverage. Copeland on the run, throws, finds Deion Williams, makes the first man miss, still going, still moving down to the 35 yard line. A very nice pickup on third down, except the Blazers needed to get to the 30 for the first down conversion. Here we see Copeland drop back. Looking around again, not much to work with, great coverage from the Tigers again. The Tigers throughout the day have had great coverage downfield. Does find his running back, Deion Williams, out of Tuscaloosa County, Alabama, 
gets a little push there from a defender and uh, is able to gain a few yards. The Blazers will go for it on fourth down and four at the West Alabama 35 yard line. Snap fake off to Deion Williams. Rolling is Copeland. He's going to dump it. It's going to be incomplete on the play intended for Derek Tharp. And the Blazers will be forced to give it over on fourth down. Well, not much to do there. I, do, I don't know if I really mind Coach Hatcher going for it there. He wants to make something happen, perhaps hold on to the ball a little longer, put a few points on, on the board. Because from that field position, you're not going to kick a field goal. You might punt the ball. Chances are you're punting it into the end zone. You're going to give the ball right back to them at the 20. Might as well give them a f about a 14-yard head start there. We'll see. Clock is now running under 20 seconds to go in the third quarter of play. Valdosta State still up by nine points, 16 to seven over West Alabama. As Reeder fakes the handoff, he's going deep. He's got a man. It's Dewan White who does not make the catch. West Alabama sideline and fans pestering the refs, wondering where the pass interference flag was. Bobby Wallace is actually out on the field arguing for the pass interference call, but he's not going to get it. Even the respected coach that he is. And with .1 seconds to go in the game, not in the game, in the third quarter, I'm getting ahead of myself here. I agree with Bobby Wallace on that call, though, Neil. There was definitely pass interference there. Carlos Anderson, the freshman out of Birmingham, Alabama, absolutely was had his hands all over the receiver there, who still was able to come down with the ball, but out of bounds. So this will be the final play of the third quarter here, as we see there, .1 seconds remain in the third quarter. Kind of funny. Second down, 10 to go for the Tigers at their own 34 yard line. Man in motion, Reader's gonna fake the handoff. He's being pressured. He's trying to get away and throws it at the last second. And it's going to be almost intercepted by number 45, Mike Fowler, the senior linebacker out of Sylvester, Georgia. Great pressure on the play by the Blazers. So we have reached the end of the third quarter here at Bazemore Hyder Stadium with your score, Valdosta State 16, West Alabama 7. We'll be back for what should be an exciting fourth quarter of action here on BSU TV right after this break. One breakthrough machine gave us insight into the bones as another did for the heart and another for the brain. Now doctors are using a new machine to practice medicine and save lives. The difference is it's one you can use too. When you log on to MedlinePlus.gov from the National Library of Medicine and the National Institutes of Health, you're tapping into the largest, most comprehensive medical website in the world. MedlinePlus.gov, the website doctors prescribe. Welcome back here on BSU TV as we start the fourth quarter of play here. Third down and 10 for the Tigers as Reader steps back, tries to loft it up. It will be incomplete on the play intended for number 10, Dewan White, and number 23, Kevin Atkins, takes a tumble into a sports medicine table. Dewan and White, again, coming down with a reception out of bounds. The guy's got great hands. If they could just get him the ball within the confines of the field, he could be a really valuable threat to this offense. But that's two great receptions he's made just out of bounds. Raymond Thomas is now set to receive the punt from J.D. Wu. As Wu connects it, it's a fairly decent punt. Thomas will make the catch at his own 33-yard line and has some blockers, but is pulled down by number 42, Baxter Grisby, at the 38-yard line the of the SU. So, Dustin, we asked, we wanted before the game for a competitive game here at Bazemore Hyder Stadium, and we've got that. First quarter was dominated by West Alabama. Second quarter, decently dominated by VSU. Not as much as West Al had dominated the first quarter. He, the third quarter kind of split down the middle. Let's see who dominates this fourth quarter, because that will decide who wins this ball game. Two receivers to each side of quarterback Willie Copeland, first and 10 Blazers. 
Copeland will fake the handoff, being pressured, of try, avoiding the tackle, still avoiding the tackle before he is brought down by number 33, Tariq Ali, the sophomore linebacker out of Birmingham, got a hold of Willie and would not let him go. As you see there, Willie talking to Michael Terry saying, where were you? Well, let's see right here. Michael Terry was blocking one guy. Unfortunately, it wasn't the guy, Tariq Ali, who got to Copeland. And then Lewis Thompson, the other linebacker, came over to help out and bring down Copeland. Snap to Copeland, handoff to Rashawn Robinson, has some room and runs for what looks like to be at least 15 yards on the play. Great run by Rashawn Robinson. Robinson has really broken out today. And as we see here on the replay, he's got some great speed and bust through the line. In previous games, it seemed that Chad Bryant and Michael Terry really showed, showed to me that they had more speed than Robinson, but he has proven me wrong today. Third and 11 for VSU. And some motion early, they're gonna stop the play. Let's see who the penalty was on. Players are pointing at both sides. So we'll see here who the call is going to be on. It appears that there are more people pointing, more Tigers are pointing to the Blazers than the Blazers are pointing to the Tigers. And the refs are still conferring. We'll figure out who the call is gonna be on. It will in fact be an offsides penalty against the Tigers, which will, which will put the ball now at the 40, Two yard line, third down now and seven to go for the Blazers at the West Alabama 41 yard line. A few personnel changes. Looks like Jeffrey Felton, Tyler Arndt, and Clay Calloway have all just checked into the ball game. We've gotten another stoppage of play here. It appears like the referees are checking the markings on the play to make sure that we have the correct field position of the ball. Now everything is in order. And it will in fact be a third down and seven to go for the Blazers at their own 42 yard line. Three receivers to the near side, one to the far side for Willie Copeland, three man rushing. Copeland going deep, has a man, it's Alan Tillman who gets by two Tiger defenders and makes the first down catch inside Tiger territory at the 44 yard line. Went in trouble today. Willie Copeland is hooked up with Alan Tillman across the middle a few times. He's usually doing that with Cedric Jones. Cedric Jones obviously not at 100% and Alan Tillman has stepped up for this Blazer offensive attack. Snap to Copeland, being pressured, avoids the pressure, and then loses the football. And it looks like that Clay Callaway was there at the right time. But Willie Copeland, however, was blitzed by three Tiger defenders and is very slow getting up on the play. Well, he initially tucked the ball in expecting a hit, but great play by the defender there and just knocking at his hands and breaking that ball loose. Willie Copeland had one Tiger defender come down right square on his right arm. That's not his throwing arm, but let's still see how that affects his rhythm now as the Blazers lose five yards on the play. Second down and 15 now at midfield. Snap to Copeland, trying to go to Tyler Arndt. Has Tyler Arndt, who breaks free of some coverage and is going down the sideline will be inside the Tiger 30 yard line, or excuse me, will be inside the Tiger 35 yard line for a first down. Again, Willie Copeland finds Tyler Arndt who has really stepped it up again. He and Alan Tillman have been the primary receivers in this offensive attack and Arndt breaks away from the pack there and picks up a bunch of yards for a first down. First down and 10 to go for the Blazers at the Tiger 33 yard line. Two receivers to the near side. Now Derek Tharp in motion to the far side. And it appears like we're going to have another false start penalty as the West Alabama defense didn't hear the whistle and kind of pushed Willie Copeland to the ground. And Chris Hatcher is out in the field saying, you guys have got to protect my quarterback. 
but it will in fact be a false start on Valdosta State. It's only the, what's it, the second the offensive line process. penalty? No, remember we had that holding, that barrage of holding penalties the second. in the third qu in the third quarter. Okay, so there's so. been a few, but the offensive line all season, other than the first two games, has really stepped it up. They had a ton of penalties early on, but lately they've been pretty good. Very good. First down and 15 for Valdosta State. Fake throw, handoff instead to Deion Williams, who picks up enough yards back to the original line of scrimmage. Clock is running, 11 minutes and 43 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. Here we see Deion Williams, the freshman from Northport, Alabama, went to Tuscaloosa, Co Tuscaloosa County High in Alabama, making the play for the Blazers. Snap to Copeland, handoff again to Deion Williams, who gets inside the 35-yard line, down to about the 33-yard line. Blazers calling some running plays here, trying to catch that Williams West Alabama Jr. defense off guard. Gain of four on the play, brings up third down and six for the Blazers. Third down now and six for the Blazers at the West Alabama 29-yard line. Sherrard Reynolds was actually in that play on offense. Now he's running off the field. Derek Tharp, Raymond Thomas, Tyler Arndt to the far side. Deion Williams in the backfield. Zach Parker to the near side for Willie Copeland. Derek Tharp in motion. Snap to Copeland. Blitz coming. Finds Tyler Arndt who makes the one-handed circus grab and goes out of bounds at about the 25-yard line. And that will be good enough. That will not be good enough for a Blazer first down. Here, Art makes a nice little catch, sticking with it. Almost trips himself up there and is able to gain another yard on the play after the uh, slip up. The Blazer offense looks like that it will. No, it will not. <laughs> as soon as I say the Blazer offense might be going for it on fourth down, in comes Zach Williams to attempt a field goal, which will be of considerable, considerable distance. Lined up on the left hash mark, about a 43, 42 yard field goal attempt. Kick is up and it looked like that it was partially blocked on the play and West Alabama holds on defense and the Blazers get no points on that drive. Cheerleaders had to be careful on that one. They almost got hit by that field goal. That would be such a travesty if the cheerleaders had to be touched by a football. So the West Alabama offense takes the field, still down only by nine points, but that is two scores. Chris Coach is back on the field after getting hurt earlier in the third quarter. So let's see how the Blazer Black Swarm attacks that. First and 10 for West Alabama. Fake handoff. Instead, they found a man. It's Edward Pierce who takes it out of bounds, close to midfield, and very good play calling there by Bobby Wallace for the counter draw fake play, if you want to call it that. Now, that's exactly what it was, Neil. It was a counter play. Fake the handoff there, and he comes around the backside there. Good play call, great execution there by Edward Pierce, the sophomore, who's really a wide receiver. Great blocking there of the West Alabama offensive line as well. First and 10 West Alabama, as Ryder is gonna keep it, pitches it at the last second. And there, number 52, Michael Cullen plays outstanding defensive coverage, tackling Josh Jones for about a two yard loss. Mike Cullen has been absolutely great at reading this option of the West Alabama Tigers. Here you saw Everett Kitchens go after the quarterback, but Cullen was in on the running back the entire time. He is quick and he hits hard. He has been great today. Second down and 12 to go for the Tigers at their own 47 yard line. Dwayne, Dwan White to the near side, three back formation. Handoff is gonna be to right. And the ball has come loose 
Let's see if the Blazers have capitalized again. They have fumble on West Alabama, and the Blazers have got their third turnover of the game. Look at, look at Coach Andrews there on the top part of your screen. Ecstatic that his Blazers have come up with another big turnover. Coach Andrews showing emotion on the football field. Never seen it before. So the Blazers, when they have recovered a fumble or an interception, they have not capitalized. Let's see if they can do it this time. Here we see the replay. The ball did come loose. Great job by the Black Swarm defense getting to the running back and knocking that ball loose. First down and 10 for the Blazers at their own 48-yard line. Snap to Copeland. Finds Allen Tillman, who was hit immediately on the play by number 29, or 28, Terrence Campbell. Good enough for about a four-yard play. Second down and six. Now inside Tiger territory. And we have a Tiger defensive lineman who tried to get up, but fell back down to the ground. And we will go to break. We'll be back with the final nine minutes of the game after this. In 1969, an explosion in Vietnam changed Bobby Barrera's life forever. Today, Bobby is a real American hero, but he still needs to work for a living. In your area, there are men and women who were injured while serving their country. They are an asset for any organization. Show your support for disabled veterans and hire a hero. For more information, contact the Disabled American Veterans today. Welcome back here on VSU TV. Eight minutes and 52 seconds to go in the ball game here. 16 to seven, the Blazers have the lead. The injured Tiger was Tim Truss, the freshman defensive tackle from Talladega, Alabama. Shake and bake. Shake and bake, as Ricky Bobby would say. Three receivers to the far side. Allen Tillman to the near side. Deion Williams in the backfield along with Willie Copeland. Snap to Copeland, fake to Williams, looking over the middle, finds Jeffrey Felton along the nears, the far sideline, who picks up about five yards and will be very close to a Blazer first down. We're seeing a lot of short comeback routes from the Blazer offense attack this week. Last week, Delta State was the first team that picked up on the many slant routes that this team has run. Now Coach Hatcher is mixing it up trying to keep West Alabama on their toes at all times on defense. Which is, sometimes it's a good thing to try and get new pass plays, new patterns, make the defense see something that they have not prepared for. And they're also going across the middle, which is something they haven't done very much this season, other than maybe Zach Parker looking for some, uh, some curl roots in the middle of the field. First down and 10 to go for the Blazers at the West Alabama 41-yard line. Jeffrey Felton, Allen Tillman, and Tyler Arndt to the near side. Reggie Vickers to the far side. Snap to Copeland. Hand off to Deion Williams, who tried the juke, but it wouldn't work, but he still picks up about four to five yards Deion on the Williams run. Deion Williams very, has become a very important part of this VSU running attack and passing attack, too. Two receivers to both the near and far sides as Willie Copeland takes the snap, looking, looking, fakes, going deep, has a man. It's Jeffrey Felton who dives and almost makes the amazing catch in the end zone. Great call there by Coach Hatcher and great pump fake and throw by Willie Copeland. The ball, however, was just out of the reach of the hands of Jeffrey Felton, which is the, that's the second ball he's had to dive for that he's just barely missed today. Great pump fake there by Copeland to draw the West Alabama defense in and allow Jeffrey Felton to run behind the coverage. Third down and six to go for the Blazers at the West Alabama 41 yard line. Play clock is rolling down to six and it looks like that the Blazers are going to call a timeout 
with seven minutes and 49 seconds to go in the quarter. I do not know what that was all about. I think that Willie Copeland wanted Zach Parker in on that play. However, everyone had been to the line. There was no more substitutions, and Parker made his way in, and he wasn't able to substitute for any of the receivers there. Come celebrate the 25th anniversary of Blazer football with The Chris Hatcher Show, airing Tuesday nights at 6.30 and Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. on BSU TV, cable channel 11. Your home for Blazer football. That's The Chris Hatcher Show, Tuesdays at 6.30 and Wednesday nights at 8 on BSU cable channel 11. As we take a look at the Blazing Brigade, the Valdosta State Band, hearing the good old, hey, go Blazer chant. We take a look at Coach Anders and his defense on the sideline, resting up until they get back on the field. Third down, six to go for Valdosta State at the West Alabama 41 yard line. Derek Tharp to the near side. Three receivers to the far side for Willie Copeland. Snap, under pressure, feeling that pressure, trying to scramble, trying to make things happen. Still moving, still moving, but brought down at the 42 yard line, which will be actually a gain of one yard. Again, a lot of movement for such a minimal gain for Copeland. Fourth down and eight to go for the Blazers. Coach Hatcher still not sure what he's going to do. This game has really slowed down. Neither team here in the second half has really done much. For your favorite spooky music, listen to Skip Gildersleeve as he celebrates over 30 years of music on the edge. Every Sunday at 9 p.m. until midnight, it's lest we forget. For requests, call 333-5661. And don't forget the ninth annual Oingo Boingo Festival on October the 29th. VSU took a delay of game penalty on the play to have a little bit more room to punt it away as Stephen Wright is back at his own 41-yard line and Dewan White is set to return it at his own 10-yard line. As Wright gets it off nice and high, and White still hasn't called for any sort of penalties yet, and the ball, or fair catch, and the ball will be down at the West Alabama 19-yard line. So Dustin, West Alabama, if you're in their shoes, you're down 16 to seven with just under seven minutes to go in the game do you continue to run the ball, or do you try and exploit some weaknesses in the VSU secondary? I want the ball in number 84's hands right now. Chris Coach, six minutes, 46 seconds to go. You're beginning what could be one of your last drives of the game. Put the ball in your playmaker's hands. Chris Coach has the ability to carry this team downfield. First and 10 for the Tigers. Ryder tries to run, instead is met behind the line of scrimmage or close to the line of scrimmage. Presser there led by Travis Harrison the and Michael Cullen. Here, and number 97. Here Ryder tries to make something happen, has nothing to work with, and a great read of the option. See, this is why they should go to the air. The Black Swarm defense is ready to play the option right now. I'm sure that's the personnel that's in there. I can almost guarantee Coach will have single coverage on him downfield. Second down, 10 to go. As Ryder hands it off to number 20, Edward Pierce, who is shoved out of bounds that time, definitely behind the line of scrimmage for a one yard loss. And still, no Chris Coach. I don't understand why they don't want to go to the air. Maybe he's still injured, but here we see the run, which did nothing. Kevin Bray with the cornerback, a great play there, and got some help from his linebacker, William Montfort, to take him out of bounds. But they need to put the ball in the air. They need to make up some ground right now. Third down and 11 for the Tigers, and now they're in shotgun formation. And now Ryder's looking, looking, fakes a pass, tries to make something happen, falls very close to a first down on the play. 
We'll see where the we'll see where the referee spots it. It will be a Tiger first down as Coach Anders doesn't like what he just saw. I mean, it was a good play by James Ryder, but it was a broken up play. His intent was to throw, and he took it himself. Don't get me wrong, he is a good quarterback. He's quick, and that's an advantage, a mobile quarterback. But when you have a guy of the caliber of Chris Coach who can make plays, you gotta put the ball in his hands when you're trying to make up a lot of ground. First and 10 for West Alabama, just over five minutes to go in the game. Ryder moving. Tries to find his man. It's being pressured. Throws on the run. Intercepted by the Blazers by Sean Harris. And he takes it to the 20-yard line. And that might just be the nail in the coffin. What happened on that play was Chris Coach went to fake a turnaround route. He came up for a fake curl. When he faked the curl, there was some incidental contact on the man covering him. Then uh, Ryder had to roll out and look for someone else. That's see there where he put his left hand up to tell him to go further. He, he had a broken up play. The play was broken up because of incidental contact. And when Ryder was hit, didn't get enough on the ball. And Sean Harris was there to get the interception for the Blazers. Good insight. I'm sure Chris Coach was wondering why there wasn't pass interference call in the play, but it was because he was fake, doing a play fake and it was just incidental contact. Now the Blazers take possession inside West Alabama territory and can just run the clock out to their heart's content. West Alabama still has all three timeouts left. And now checking into the ball game will be Barrett Wilkes as Willie Copeland now leaves the game. There you see Barrett Wilkes, the senior out of here in Valdosta, Georgia. Should be seeing some uh, quarterback keepers here from Barrett Wilkes who has some Quick feet for a quarterback. Four receivers for the Blazers. As it looks like West Alabama might take their first time out to try and save some of this clock. Or it might just be that the refs are conferring about something. Either way, the referee appears to be going to the Blazers sideline. I have no idea what that sign means. Was he raising the roof? I, I don't know if that's exactly what he was doing on that play. <laughs> on the <laughs> First down and 10 to go. Excuse me, second down and seven to go for the Blazers at the West Alabama 28 yard line. Four minutes, 10 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. Valdosta State still up by nine points, 16 to seven. 11 seconds left on the play clock and Barrett Wilkes, uh, Barrett Wilkes is just gonna milk that clock for as much as he can. Snap to Wilkes. Hand off to Rashawn Robinson who gets minimal yardage on the play. But again, all the Blazers wanna do is run that clock out, maybe put a field goal up on the board to give themselves a nice 19 to 7 cushion but with the way that Zach Williams has been kicking the ball today that's not such a no sure play, bet under three minutes and 30 seconds to go in the game Derek Tharp and Alan Tillman to the near side Tyler Arndt and I believe Reggie Vickers to the far side. Wilkes is gonna throw. He's going deep. He has a man. It's gonna be Derek Tharp who is knocked out of bounds on the play and Barrett Wilkes in the Blazers offense trying to catch the West Alabama defense napping. It didn't work. I like the play call there from Coach Hatcher. They're, they're guarding you against the run. They're, pro they're clogging the middle. You're gonna have single coverage on the outside on both of your receivers. Might as well go for the end zone there. It, it was a good chance, I like it. Fourth down and seven to go for the Blazers at the West Alabama 28 yard line. In comes the kicking unit and Stephen Wright. This is a very important field goal for Stephen Wright. If he makes it, the Blazers are looking at a 19 to seven lead if he misses it, it's still a very reasonable game for West Alabama. And Coach Hatcher has got to be upset with that. And the fake was just sniffed out by the refs. 
The fake was sniffed out because of a delay of game penalty. Well, there goes the element of surprise, Dustin. And I don't think they're going to be kicking a field goal from this distance now. Nope. Because there goes Zach Williams, the holder. And now there's no Blazer unit out on the field. Yep, there we go. Instead of a field goal, they're going to punt it away and hope that Valdosta State gets a good bounce and it goes out of bounds or is stopped dead within the 10-yard line. And that's not going to be the – well, let's see here. It's hung up high, and the ball will be – Downed inside the 10-yard line at the 6-yard line. For a moment there, when I first saw the ball being kicked, I thought it was going to go into the end zone. Good punt again from the punter, Stephen Wright. So, West Alabama still down only by 9 points, but they've got to get the ball downfield. And Dustin, what should they do again? Put the ball in the playmaker's hands. Well, now you're so close to your end zone, you have to run the ball until you get to about the 20-yard line. You don't want to risk an interception that's going to be just walked into the end zone here. So you got to run the ball a little bit and then go to the air. First and 10 for the Tigers at their own six-yard line. They're going to try and pass, and the pass is going to be complete out of the backfield to number 25, Josh Jones, who is still moving, still dragging people down to the 24-yard line. That's going to be good enough for a Tiger first down. Or don't listen to me. I think they would like to rely on their coach's strategy and not Dustin Sweetelson's strategy. Anyway, here we see Ryder drop back. Had some pressure coming at him. Could have had a safety there. Just made a nice play there. Uh, giving the ball off to Josh Jones, his sophomore running back, who picked up the first down and made some nice cuts there. Let's see what they do here from beyond the 20. Ryder back to pass, feeling the pressure, rolling out, still rolling, before he takes a massive hit, the ball is loose. And West Alabama did recover it. <laughs> Credit number 57, Bo May, for the massive initial hit that forced the ball out of Ryder's hands. Ryder ran into a 270 pound wall named Bo May from Apex, North Carolina. Timeout has been called by West Alabama. It's their first timeout of the half with two minutes and 10 seconds to go here in the final quarter of play. VSU Cable Channel 11 will bring you up to date election results on Tuesday, November 7th, starting at 8 p.m. Vote 2006 will cover all of the local and state results. That's Vote 2006 brought to you by the Society of Collegiate Journalists and VSU's Mass Media Area. So Dustin, this game is still not in secure hands for the Blazers as they find themselves only clinging to a nine point lead. Nine point lead with two minutes and 10 seconds to go here in the game. West Alabama has a significant chance of putting up those nine points very quickly. Snap to Ryder, under pressure, feeling the heat, going to dump it off to Wright, who's got some room, is forced out of bounds at the 40-yard line. And you know that pressure was being put on by the Black Swarm because James Ryder just got up from the 10-yard line. Well, Jaron Wright made the smart play, made sure he picked up a few yards and then got out of bounds, didn't try to get fancy going downfield, wanted to stop that clock at two minutes and two seconds. Snap to Ryder, looking over the middle, has his man, it's gonna be incomplete on the play. The Blazer defense thought it had its fourth forced turnover of the game with a Greg Petty interception, but it was ruled an incomplete pass. And I could hear the ball thud on the ground, even from up here. Petty tried to make it seem like he was trying to cover up the ball after getting the interception, but he was looking down way too much, and you can tell he was picking the ball off the ground. But hey, you got to try for it sometimes. Three receivers to the near side. One of the far side is Reeder. Dumps out of his backfield, finds Wright, who makes the first person miss. 
and Travis Harrison makes sure he got at least a shoelace on the play. And now it looks like that West Alabama will take their second timeout of the game. With one minute and 48 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. That's their second charge timeout of the second half. Looking for a job? Companies including Schwann, Universal Forest Products, and Walgreens will be hosting a series of on-campus interviews here at Valdosta State University. Make sure to check out the VSU Bulletin Board on cable channel 11 to find out information on these events and others around campus. There you see the Blazer Black Swarm defense surrounding their coach, Ashley Andrews. You're pointing at a player. Who are you pointing at? Maurice Leggett is going to be huge for this defense right now during this drive because he's the man who's been given the assignment of covering Chris Coach, the senior wide receiver for West Alabama. He's done a great job all day limiting Coach to, to what could have been an absolutely ridiculous uh, day statistically. And this is going to be crucial, this drive right here for West Alabama, to see if Leggett can stick with Coach all the way. Third down and nine to go for the Red and White Tigers out of Livingston, Alabama. Two receivers to the near side, two receivers to the far side. Snap to Ryder, looking, 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 being forced out of the pocket, throwing on the run, incomplete on the play. Intended receiver was Utavius Ingram, the junior, out of Opelika, Alabama. But there is a penalty flag on the play at the, at the Blazer 41-yard line. And it actually looks like uh, Coach Andrews has changed assignments on defense. He now has Kevin Bray uh, in single coverage taking on number 84, Chris Coach. And we had we, we saw Maurice Leggett in our screen on that play covering Utavius Ingram. The penalty was a holding call on the Blazers. And whenever the defense holds Dustin, that's an automatic first down for the offense. So the Tigers are now inside Blazer territory with one minute and 42 seconds to go in the game. Two receivers to the near side, two receivers to the far side for James Ryder. Snap to Ryder, looking, looking, feeling the pressure, rolling to his right, going deep, has a man in the end zone, and it's going to be caught by Dewan White for the touchdown. Remarkable catch. Like I said, if you get the ball Dewan, to Dewan White, the freshman, if you get the ball to him, in between the two white lines that mark out of the field, he's making the catch. We saw him make two tremendous catches out of bounds. But look, look at this catch here. Ryder makes the play, goes deep. Let's see, one, two, three, four Black Swarm defenders. And who comes down with it? White. Now after, after the point after attempt here, you can almost guarantee there's gonna be an onside kick attempt because with a minute 32 to go and just one timeout left, West Alabama needs to go for the onside kick. Another illegal participation penalty was called on the Blazers. And as soon as that was signaled, Coach Hatcher just dropped his head because he knew that his team just is not playing smart in the fourth quarter, especially late in the fourth quarter. A lot of absent-minded penalties here, holdings, things that could be easily avoided. How often do you see a defensive holding, Neil? Not often enough, Dustin. And to attempt the point after attempt will be J.D. Well, excuse me, will be Mitch Warfield, the kicker. And it is up and it is good. So this game is far from over with one minute and 32 seconds to go here in the fourth quarter. It's now a game. Badassa State leads 16 to 14. And now, with the score 16-14, an onside kick, a drive down the field, which were only a minute 32 left. That's plenty of time for this West Alabama offense, which just showed how capable they are of making a big play. A field goal would win the game. If they can get the ball down there and hold the ball, DSU only has two timeouts left. If West Alabama can recover an onside kick, which I mean, it's difficult, but it has been done, and against DSU this year, they can drive down the field, 
in a minute 32 seconds, wait it out, hold the ball where they want it to be kicked, and kick a field goal to end this game and upset Valdosta State here at home. It looked like in the second quarter and third quarter of my quarters, Valdosta State found their rhythm. Now, maybe they went into the locker room a little bit, a little bit heavy. My producer has just pointed out the fact that there are two kickers out in the field and now the players are being drawn to the sidelines. Timeout will be taken by Valdosta State. They didn't know that there were two kickers on the field. So wise move there by the Blazers, even though Coach Hatcher has his head off pondering the sideline, wandering the sideline. They were not aware, Dustin, that there were two kickers on the field. And two kickers on the field involves kind of a, a play fake on the kick where you don't know if the ball is going to go left, you don't know if it's going to go right. And <laughs> if you don't know where the ball's going, you can't defend, you can't go after it. So had to call a timeout there and burn one. Still two kickers are out on the field. Mitch Warfield is the kicker on the far side of the field. J.D. Wu is a kicker on the near side of the field. There we see right there, 41 was Warfield, 48 was Wu. So here we go, onside kick to determine who gets possession of the ball. It will be kicked to the right, and good hands there by Dedrick Smith to take it in, and the Blazers recover the onside kick at the West Alabama 46 yard line, but Dustin, far from over. Far from over, and credit to Bobby Wallace. I'm, I love his play calls today. He has called some great plays on both sides of the ball in coverage, on offense, and special teams right there. I, I really love what he's doing as a coach. There's a, there's a reason he won three straight national championships. So now the Blazers are in control of the ball with one minute and 28 seconds to go. West Alabama has one timeout left, and that new rule of starting the clock when the ball is, is marked ready for play now becomes incredibly huge because now the Blazers can wait off at least 10 more seconds here before stopping the ball, snapping the ball. And Willie will take a knee, and West Alabama will take their final timeout of the game with one minute to go in the game. And now chances are looking really slim now that West Alabama is gonna pull this one off, but still, like you said, incredible props are due to the West Alabama coaching staff. Oh, they called some great plays today. Their players executed. Chris Coach just impressed me. To me, he was the best player on the field today. If they could have gotten the ball in his hands, it probably could have been a different story. He just did not get enough receptions today but their running attack was solid. Uh, Tomlin and Wright were, were great for them today. Dwan White, the freshman receiver, made one of the most amazing catches I have ever seen on a football field. And, and James Ryder had a good game at quarterback. Th this West Alabama team played very good today, good enough to win. Their five wins on the year, only two were against average opponents in Southern Arkansas and West Georgia. The other three wins were against lesser known D2 and even D3 schools. But you've got to give it to West Alabama coming in here with everything against them to have the battle that they've had against Valdosta State. And now Valdosta State can take a knee and can celebrate a hard earned victory 16 to 14 over the West Alabama Tigers. Now since we have time, Dustin, let's go ahead and preview. Next week, the game of the year for, for Valdosta State and Coach Chris Hatcher up to Florence to take on the undefeated and number three ranked Lions of North Alabama. Well, there's a reason they're ranked number three, Neil. And the Blazers need to prove that the loss to Delta State was a fluke and them not coming out and blowing out West Alabama today was a fluke. And they need to go there and basically play perfect 
football against North Alabama because that is going to be the biggest test for this team if they want to move on. If they win, the conference is pretty much theirs. If they lose, we don't know. So with that, we bid you adieu from Bazemore Hatter Stadium as Valdosta State hangs on to beat West Alabama by a final score of 16 to 14. Reminder, senior day will be November 4th here at Bazemore Hatter Stadium when the Blazers take on Arkansas Monticello. But next week, Blazers at North Alabama. Make sure you pay attention for that game. Huge implications. So, for the entire VSU crew, for my producer, Brock Weatherby, and my color analyst, Dustin Swedelson, I am Neil Folger saying thank you for watching, and we'll see you two weeks from today. Until then, God bless. Arkansas Monticello, November 4th at 1 o'clock p.m.